Look at us go. Eva who? <laughs> Eva who? She's uh, on vacay with her family right now. Vacay. Well, it's she's, also, she's visiting her home. She's visiting. Right? But it's also, like Saturday. The beach. it's also Saturday. So we, we wouldn't expect her to <laughs> hang around here anyway. But we are going solo today. We are. We're uh, <laughs> taking things off course, I suppose. <laughs> we are already hurtling off a cliff uh, uh, 10 seconds in. Uh, I was just telling Christine a second ago that, well, we were talking about her wall and I never realized that it was gold before. You slept in this room like three times. Exactly. My eyes are closed every time I'm in that room. Okay, what that's are you fair. talking about? It's a wallpaper that from like anthropology, it was fucking expensive. I don't recommend. And it didn't well, it even come. It was etched in gold. pre so tell me. But yes, it's shiny. It's like gold and cream colored and it's like an accent wall. Here's and, a good, um, here's a good like, um. Hmm. Like a little, like if I were to wish ill will on you, but like oh, not. Oh, like, excellent. But like what? in an, in, here's the thing. I never want to wish physical ill, on, a physical ill will on anybody. But if I'm ever mad at somebody, I always wish like slight inconveniences on them. And that explains if, a lot in my day to day life. Thank you for finally admitting. I'm just powerful. But if I were <laughs> to manifest or, or wish uh, ill convenience on you, uh, I hope one day, if deserved, that your child decides to draw on the walls and only on the one etched in gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, you make it sound, I love it, because you make it sound like I have a wall literally etched in gold. It is not etched in gold, but it is shiny. I mean, it. If you're on YouTube, take a look at that wall and tell okay, me if it's etched exactly. in gold. Exactly. And I, I also, I suddenly was getting all these TikTok followers and I was like, how did this happen? And then I remembered on an episode, I was like, I'm going to do like weird shit in my house on TikTok and I still haven't done it. So I plan on it and I guess we can add this dumb wall to the Yeah, here's the first the one. Here's the first I was one. I was uh saying it to you before and then I stopped myself cuz I thought like maybe it was worth documenting which now in hindsight no it wasn't. But do you <laughs> I do. Do you know that there is a pickle place? I you follow stopped on right TikTok. there. You said, did you know there's a pickle place? And they said, wait, let's record first. And I said, I already can promise the answer is I don't know whatever you're about to tell me. So, so anyway, go ahead. Five years of producing a podcast. And I still think most things are worth documenting <laughs> yeah. on audio and they're just not. Um, and we but do there's, it anyway. a, there's a pickle place where you can like, uh, like you can have it dipped in anything. And then, like, one of the options is a 24-carat pickle where you get a dipped in edible gold, and that's, like... Oh, my God. Where is that? <sighs> I knew you were going to ask, and I don't remember. That sounds I've, like something M would do. I'd be like, I would why? totally eat that. I'd Although, like, edible gold's kind of nasty, to it, be honest. I feel like I wouldn't want to eat that. I feel like it would hurt my tummy. Have you ever had a cool lickle? There's pretty good. Uh, Yes, my step-grandmother. Step-grandmama. Step um Whoa. You know, Pam. <laughs> she I makes love them. Pam. <laughs> Pam looks like the exact person who would know how to whip up a cool lickle. Right? I know. She and my mom <laughs> is still horrified about the whole incident, but I think they're great. <laughs> I love cool lickles, but the, the gold really threw me off. But then this place also, like, wraps it in, like, cotton candy. I'm not into that. No. I, they're, there's Why a pickle? I guess there's it's... limits to what you can do with a pickle, and the the list is very small, I think. I would agree. I guess some people don't, but how much is the... You know, gold pickle do we you have any idea it was like 12 bucks which like That's it. in terms in terms of gold real cheap in terms like, of pickles real pricey real expensive in terms of like gimmicks eh, not too bad i guess yeah and also shockingly at the store you know what they didn't have because like they had a one of the a bunch of the options where like you take you core out the pickle and have stuff in the pickle so you can oh, eat the pickle with stuff in it a filled pickle yeah and like of all the things that they had there not a single peanut butter filled Pickle, I was going to ask. Like, peanut butter and pickles are like a kind of like a common combo. Common, common is maybe not the word I'd use, but I didn't say popular, but it is universally a polarizing topic on are it, you pro or anti, anti peanut butter pickle. I know you're not asking me, but I am anti. I'm pro. I thought I'd be anti, really? but then my babysitter when I was a kid, she was pregnant when she was watching me and had like the peanut butter pickle sandwich craving. And I was eight, and so I was, like, the perfect demographic to not judge her. <laughs> and so she was like, you have one if I have one. And I ate it, and I was like, holy shit, this is actually not that bad. Oh, on a sandwich, I feel like it's less terrifying. I'm just picturing, like, 
just chunks of peanut butter on a pickle and that's <laughs> gross. But a sandwich, I could see why that could work. But um, It's the salty sweet thing. I mean, you can do yeah. it with anything. Do you ever do like the peanuts and Coke? That's pretty good. No, but I think I only learned about that, I think from you or somebody like a couple mm. years ago. I hadn't even heard of that being a thing. Oh, it's very good. I mean, when anyway. I was little, my mom would cook up like ostrich. And yeah, put... you're really not the person to compare <laughs> food with. Okay. <laughs> try, try picturing cool lickles showing up at my house and how my mother reacted to that with her mother-in-law showing up with a jar of it. it was the ostrich pretty. would come back to life and be like, what is that? <laughs> oh, it certainly did. Um, oh, I wanted to say a fun announcement we have, which is that we started a new podcast. Oh, my God. Yeah. And we, we haven't sure been did. able to talk about it on the show. And I feel like... And that so it's with Parcast, and I, before we, I did get a few DMs being like, "Isn't that's why you drink over?" I understand if it, and I was oh. like, "No, God, no, no!" And people were very kind in asking, but clearly, like, very concerned. And no, 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 no. This is just kind of a fun side project. And the good news is, we're hosting it, but Parcast um, on Spotify are doing a lot of the legwork as far as like they did the logo and doing the editing and like did a lot of the research so it's it's really cool because we get to kind of do the fun part of just telling stories and it's called rituals before i forget to name it yes it it is fun it feels a little like getting to be divas in a way because like all like no offense but like all the grunt work is on other people it's very fun to just show up with a microphone and just like get to like it's see so the fun. notes and go for it. it and it's like kind of deep dives into things that we've like touched on in the past so it's um like occult stuff which obviously is one of our favorite topics in the world and um you know it's all sorts of spooky stuff but it's they do you know tons of research and kind of pull out some really fun stuff for us to just chat about and i actually i found i think the first person who's tweeted at us who had never heard of us before and found the podcast oh. and was like really into it and i no I, way. It, I know it was such a cool moment and i think they live in germany too and i was like this is Whoa. so exciting oh so my gosh. Um, it's called rituals it's on spotify um i do have one request to For everybody me? oh <laughs> well you too i guess you can join in but um if you happen to listen and you do enjoy it i would really request that you give it a little five star because um i'm having a little bit of a complex about it being <laughs> 4.5 stars out of five christine uh, i this is like the third time i've heard you talk about i can't it. get over it i'm being really <laughs> sensitive about it and i'm sorry and it, it doesn't really matter in the end because um we love it and i know a lot of you guys do but i don't know if you want to throw it a rating that would be really kind because i think a lot of people heard it and are like who are these whack jobs <laughs> on my spotify feed and it's us so well yeah and also uh thank you to podcast for reaching out and wanting to work with oh, us that was such, like, it's such cool. a so cool it, it was it's also been a lot of fun they're more um in case you're wondering what like the format is it's more of a bite-sized version of and that's why we drink mm-hmm. i guess the episodes mm-hmm. are much shorter but it just kind of gives you like really good talking points um I, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were as inclusive as possible mm-hmm. we i i think we can now talk about how weirdly mm-hmm. aggressive i was in all of our meetings where i was <laughs> like i felt bad because i was like christine i'm gonna tell them again i'm gonna tell them again i was, but like, I was like you fucking go man i will <laughs> back you up and not that they weren't going to be respectful but i was just so overly cautious that if we were going to be talking about things like the occult like i didn't want to do it I, people's spiritual identities practices yeah. right and so we actually do have uh, practicing witches on our research okay. team. I was about to say my favorite of- moment was when Em was so nervous about like addressing it again. And I was like, no, listen, like you say it, it's your whatever, whatever. <laughs> I mean, of course I'm like, you say it, but no, you were like nervous about it. And I was like, no, no, like it's important. You, you know, get your thoughts out there. And uh, I see this guy keep like trying to raise his hand and I'm like, cause we're on this big zoom call and he keeps trying to like in- insert himself. And finally he's like, Oh, I'm actually a practicing witch. Um, and and he, like, he has his, he's in like runs his own coven or is in like, yeah. the, is like the leader and he's the doing president. Research. I don't know what the right term is, but he's the he was what? like, I, he, I don't know what the right term is for like being in charge of your own coven. Oh, 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 oh yeah. But he was like, yeah, I have my own coven and I, you know, and it I was, was like, oh, it, you should have spoken a long time ago. I know, podcast was like, oh, don't worry. We have yeah. we have the right people researching who know what they're doing. And it was just such a comforting, uh, awesome. And I've always, I've always known from previous shows that podcast research team was great. But I was just weirdly paranoid because we were going into this with all of 
our meetings with them saying like, hey, our demographic is largely very open minded, very into spirituality, very into, you know, witchcraft, a very lot of diverse. people practice, yeah. very diverse. Like if we are hoping that people will want to listen to another show of ours, like, and we don't get, to, we're not, you know, number one in charge of the research. Like I need to know that I can trust that it's in good hands. And so they have been so accommodating and so wonderful. And we have talked about so many fun things already. We talked about tarot, the history of tarot, which okay. I had no idea about. I have something. Oh, God. (laughs) Look what I have. This is a tarot deck that I just found on my way upstairs. And it is the Cat's Eye Tarot. Stop it. So I was going to ask you, what's your favorite episode that we've... Because we've only recorded a few and they come out every Monday. Um, But what's your favorite episode we've recorded, would you say? Do you have a favorite? Mm, I am partial to... uh, the Arthur Conan Doyle history because just because of how much I am publicly in love with the story of Harry Houdini <laughs> against the mediums. So um, to finally hear the, a different side of it was, was very interesting. To, yes. To I love those episodes too. They're so fun to um, let M regale me with the tales all over again. And um, I think Tara was also one of my favorites too. I got to tell Christina all about Tara. We oh, found out that best. it was basically like, old antiquated mash that was yes. like where tarot came from Crazy. yeah poor eva came we saw eva last week when we were on tour and um poor eva had to sit there and listen to us tell her about the history of tarot because the episode hasn't come out yet um, it's also weird for eva to listen to rituals because yeah. it, she has nothing to do with it and so She's it's weird for about, her to just be a, an active listener it's very weird it, anyway yeah. Oh, so okay sorry so i have this cat's eye tarot i found it on the way upstairs because i was going to talk about how that was my favorite episode we've recorded and blah 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 and i was like oh how fun i'll just pick a little card for M. so <gasps> do you want to um pick, i don't know how to best do this but uh, look by the way look at the backs of them they have these car- cats. <laughs> cats and i, I found it. this on the way upstairs and i was like i forgot i bought this with you i think eva was there too it was when we went to one of those witchy shops in kentucky when mm. you were visiting me and oh yeah bought, i bought a ouija board because <laughs> you still have mine and um and yeah, it's gonna stay here too christine um <laughs> okay my first gut instinct which is so weird was the eighth from the left okay this left or this left this one yes okay <laughs> this left or this left the eighth one two three four five six seven Oh, ooh la la. <laughs> what is it? Is it Vixen? What is it's it? The Empress. The Empress. The e- Hey, I didn't even put that together. But also, look, the, like the picture is like a cat in a wedding dress or something. Oh, it's, no, it's just fluffy. It's just the Aristocats, basically, is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> the Empress. Okay. As I'm looking for the, the description, I just want to point out, too, like, after doing that uh, uh, episode, M brought me a wonderful gift and it was a uh, a uh, an original tar- like a circular rider weight original tarot deck it's it so It was the one we had cool. like just talked about on yeah. rituals. Yeah. And I've gotten just really excited about tarot again. Um Oh my god, one of them is called the Hanged Kitty. I don't like that. The Hanged uh, oh, here, Kitty. Here we go. Keywords abundance. Mm-hmm. protection the world of mystery does not beckon for this plush long-haired mother cat <laughs> meow her world is one of comfort and abundance okay sensual and lusty in her appetites <laughs> brr, brr. nurturing and protective of her kittens she's <laughs> perfectly at home in her safe secure world uh a pampered queen okay we'll say it. amen <laughs> put the emojis of the like sparkles around that a pampered queen um and i will say it was upside down which i know means something and i don't know what it means is it i don't know but (laughs) means not a pampered queen means the opposite of a pampered queen um maybe i'm not lusty like i thought i was oh man that's a bummer Hmm. um but yeah so in a reading it says uh it's it's in reference to an aspect of your life that's currently focused on mothering, not necessarily you mothering, but like a mother figure or somebody who feels like a mother figure in your life. Interesting. Um, well, also, my mom's birthday's this week. Oh, hey, that's true. Okay. And you did on tour, you did a lot of like, uh, I made, shout outs. I made a, a few venues shout happy birthday to my mother. It was very so. sweet. 
Yeah. Um, it also, the last line just says, this card suggests a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling of satisfaction, like a kitten safely curled up in the protective shadow of its mom. That's very oh, sweet. that's nice. Um, and the, the next one is Emperor, which I kind of wish you had gotten that because that would have been very funny. But I also love a pampered queen. So, Well, um, if, if Allison were here, she would just be still on the floor laughing. I just at feel the accurate. eye roll from wherever she is right now. I think she thinks <laughs> I'm the biggest diva in the world because... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I like to think in a lot of aspects of my life, I'm pretty laid back and chill. But then Allison, who has taken on the role of like being responsible, well, being responsible, whatever that means, of being the the priority person that I focus all my love and attention on and I demand the same back. And I'm like, hi, I, w- uh-huh. I would like love now. I would like attention, please. This card is making sense now. I'm seeing uh-huh. it. Yeah, I'm uh-huh. seeing it. And you mm-hmm. know what? Actually, that makes a little sense because she's actually been gone. I haven't seen her since we left for our own show. And then she's not coming back till the end of April, right when we leave again. So we're going like a month without seeing each other. And I have been very needy because oh, she's not around to give me attention. Great. Glad I'm on Zoom now. Hi. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> a pampered queen. Um, I'm really pleased about that. So thank you for playing along with me. But... Anyway, that was my long away, my long. I, I love don't know, it. Is journey. that why you drink this week? Because you found a new deck of tarot? Yeah, I am. And I just found it a little paper bag on the stairs. It felt kind of like a sign. Like, I don't even remember it being there before. And huh. um, now it's there. And, and we just released, you know, hopefully that episode's coming out soon. And um, I'm, I'm newly into tarot, into tarot. Wow. Yeah. Tarot. Thanks to you and your narration. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, is that is that it then? Should we yeah, get going? Yeah, that's it. Unless you have more uh, more exciting uh, kitty kitty news Not to kitty. share. Not kitty. Not kitty. I no. Hmm. The last three days, I'll say why I drink. I'm drinking water, by the way, today. Me too. Uh, hey. A hydrated queen. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish I had like Fiji or something so I could be the pampered queen. But um, well, alas, neither of us do. So. Well, I got to be honest, since I came back, I don't know if, I don't know what, like, my environment, I don't know what's causing this, Uh but, um, no, but since I, since we came back, I don't know if it's just because, like, I don't have a lot of time to get things done before we're back on the road or something. I don't know if my brain chemistry has changed for (laughs) the better, but in the last three days, I think I've been more productive than I have in, like, 10 years. What? Really? I've been so fucking productive. Yeah. And you and I have done some like shockingly productive things over the past five years <laughs> that we did not ever expect ourselves to do. So that's impressive. It has felt like and like, by the way, I know I am currently not on Adderall, because if you listen back to the last episode, I'm currently trying to figure out what this, a doozy like, that episode was. It has not I even know. come out yet. Uh, it, as we're, as of recording, it comes out in a few hours. So we're going to be bombarded with also uh if people are writing out to me and i'm not responding my instagram also got shut down and i don't know why so that's, that's a whole thing right you're in jail so on there I, i'm in jail i posted a picture of allison like just standing and they were like we have removed your content you have broken community guidelines and now i can't log back on so you can't anyway, even log in i can't even log in anymore oh, that explains a lot i keep tagging you and things oh and then i tried to tag em and something on a comment and it was like you may not do this. And I was like, I can't even mention M in this comment. Uh, You're like really in jail. And I reached out to like our manager and we have like people that work in PR that I I was like, does anyone know anyone on Instagram that can fix this? Because like one, I have sponsors that like I said, I would post things for and like, I can't super fucking awkward. Uh, I like just want to like repost people coming to our live shows. I haven't been able to do that once. (laughs) So like, it's just been a real headache. So, um, then they were like, well, we don't, we don't, we don't know. Instagram stopped taking active requests. So, Jeez. so basically I'm just stuck not having an Instagram now, but, um, how did I get there? I don't remember. Anyway, I'm being, so, oh, so for people, people wondering, yeah. I know I'm not currently take, I was on Adderall and then they made me take it, uh, to stop taking it until I figure out my heart stuff. Cause they don't want to give me recreational speed until they know that my irregular Aww, high man. rate heart, heartbeat is okay. Um, so I don't, I don't know what's causing it, but I've just been so stinking productive in the last three days. I scheduled like 15 different appointments and stuff like 
I have like I figured out all my health insurance stuff. I have, have been you... getting stuff done to my car. I went to the post office. I have been cooking and showering every day and what? waking up at 8 a.m. What? I know. And when I have ordered food delivered, it's been healthy every time. Also love that like Em's like I'm waking up at 8 a.m. and I'm like really I feel like if I go back to our text chain like there are just times where I'm like Em is a wall, but I guess <laughs> Em's at the because post I've been office. so it's because I've been doing so much others like i've been focusing on getting so many things done i haven't even been near my phone like so i've been and like n also maybe it's because i'm not on instagram like maybe because like i'm not oh using God, social what media that was it? i don't um, know i'm but also anyway. kidding because i totally didn't respond to like three of your texts last night but um i wanted to also ask you this is something you do not have to tell me but are you like are you on any new medications for the heart mm -mm. thing or anything like it's not yet. it couldn't be like a side effect of that wow um, yesterday I got an echocardiogram and tomorrow I get, um, fit for a heart monitor oh my and gosh. then, uh, and that's currently it. They up my propranolol while I'm on tour, but I mean, you have seen me backstage on shows where like, I still think I'm going to die no matter how medicated I am. That's correct. Um, so it's currently there's a lot of band-aids while they f monitor it, but they don't really know what to do yet. Well, I'm so. proud of you for being productive. That's very exciting. I, I know Thank you. I, I love that feeling when that happens on the rare occasion that it happens. Me to too. Me. I also have been getting, I, here's the crazy thing. Uh, I have, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I spent like six hours on this yesterday. I can send it to you later if you'd like to see my chaos, but I came out with a whole Excel sheet of all of my medical history <gasps> all of the doctors that I have, here's the categories that I have for each doctor. I have the doctor, their address and contact information, notes about my medical history with them, including dates of appointments. I have my family history that's relevant to them listed, things I need to address for my next appointment, current medications, current diagnoses, and my next appointment coming up. Also, my last appointment that I had with them and wow. any notes that they gave me during that appointment. And I did it for like 10 different doctors. And then I have like a list of all these other doctors I still need to call and their phone numbers. And anyway. Oh, yeah. Well, I found a tarot deck and opened hey! it up. So all right. you, you know what? I think we're even. <laughs> so anyway, sorry for making this even longer than necessary. But I, uh, I'm very proud of you. That's very impressive. Thank you. My mental health is like for once at 100. So it's very weird. <laughs> oh, shit. It'll come crashing down, I'm sure. Okay. Anyway, back <laughs> on to ghosts, because we've been talking for like 25 minutes. This is a very juicy one, but here's my problem, Christine. I swear I've covered this before. I swear I've covered this before. Interesting. I like when this happens, because it, it gives a glimpse into like our kind of Mandela effect approach, each of us, like the way we see the world. Yeah. That's well, dramatic. It, That's so dramatic. I don't know why, but... I kind of loved it. Thanks. But, um... I, I looked everywhere. I looked through all of the episode lists that we have on our website. By the way, you can use that sometime if you ever want to because I worked really hard on it. <laughs> and uh, I, it's nowhere. I, but I know, not only do I know that I've read this research and it seemed familiar, but it got to a point where in the research, I was guessing what was going to happen next and it did. I watched different TV shows to get more information on it and I had already seen the episodes and I know I wouldn't have watched them if it weren't for research. So like I've definitely covered this before and I can't find it anywhere. So um maybe I covered it on like a wine and crime or Okay, well what is it? Maybe. So this is the Palmer House Hotel in Sauk Center, Minnesota. I've heard of Palmer, but I think did you do a different Palmer? I've certainly done this Palmer. I just don't know where. And I feel like you're going to recognize some of the things I say, too, really? because there were things that I saw in my research where then I like would write like a side note of like a co something to comment when I got to that point in the yeah. story. And I was like, I've written this comment before. <laughs> so like I've definitely covered if, if anyone knows what episode number it is or where I've done this before. Can you please let me know? Because I feel like I'm losing my mind. And it's Palmer. and it's not. It's not on our episode list. Weird. Okay, I don't I recognize the name, but I don't know if that's just like some other place I've heard of or not. So maybe if if you start and I recognize it, I'll tell you. Okay. 
Also, by the way, it was I looked through like my own documents on my computer to see if I've covered it before. And apparently I never fucking saved the document. So it was a real pain in the ass having to redo all these notes that I that know I've done. Blows. <laughs> I don't, it might be on a hard drive somewhere. Okay. So this is the Palmer House Hotel. And I would like to start with a quote, my favorite quote from this episode of Ghost Adventures, where Zach Bagans, before he uh, started investigating, he saw a rainbow and he quoted, I don't think we're hunting leprechauns on this lockdown. <laughs> and some PA was like, please make a note to cut that out in the final edit. <laughs> uh, and then a different PA was like, we will certainly be putting it in. We have to put it in. Um, that's good. Okay. So this is in, uh, is a historic hotel in Sauk Center, Minnesota. It is on the National Register of Historic Places since 1982. It is still in business as a hotel, restaurant, and pub, which it has been since the beginning. Um, so it all started in 1863. That's how long this building's yeah, been here. So <laughs> the it was originally called the Sauk Center House, and it was a boarding house and low-key a brothel. Um, oh, ooh la la. I think it was a lustful kitty cat. No. Um, <laughs> no, hard working kitty cat who did not deserve whatever treatment yeah, they were lustful given. probably the other way around, right? Yeah, the exact opposite. What's the um, card it was upside down? The reversed. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Maybe. The uh what was it? Where was it? Oh, brothel, of course. This was also the city's first version of a hotel. Or I say version of a hotel because it was a boarding house and brothel, but it was the first place in town that people stayed at okay um four years later it was uh, bought out and it became known as the minnesota house mm. and very quickly it changed owners again and again and eventually became the apfeld house i'm just thinking minnesota this could very well be a wine and crime thing it might be you know what i mean i literally even checked our book i was like did i write about this in our book <laughs> that would have uh, been fun <laughs> It would have been, um, spoiler alert, I'm so sorry this did not make the book, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it, it's got to be somewhere. Uh, and it wasn't our notes for our live show we did in Minnesota either. So. It could very well have been on one of the episodes we did on their show, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It is Minnesota, so that's why I think Wine and Crime, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it changed hands a lot uh, from 1863 to, uh, I think... Within the first few years, it changed a lot. And by the time it was called the Atfield House, in, on June 26th in 1900, the building burned down. Oh, no. I don't know if it was the Atfield House at the time that it burned down or if it had just been bought by someone else and then it burned down. It, it was kind of confusing to follow how many owners this building had. Okay. But at any rate, it burned down in 1900. And locals were allegedly happy that it burned down because it was such a stain on the town as a brothel oh, and like a saloon and all that. So um, there was also rumors that the fire was actually intentional. So the town didn't have to Just deal wondering. with it anymore. Yeah. If you're um, happy about a fire, you're going to be a suspect, I imagine. And I will say there were no injuries in the fire. So maybe well, that's good. That, w that helped people not seem suspicious when they were happy, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. So there was that fire in 1900, which is the most famous of them all. But there were a few other fires on the property. So in 1873, there was a fire when it was a barn from a cigar sitting in a hay bale. Nice. Oh, boy. Um, another time was in 1885. Uh, there, it's an unknown cause for how it happened, but there was a fire. And then in 1905, there was another fire where apparently eight staff members and boarders all jumped from the window. And I think they jumped from the window onto a trampoline and survived because after all those fires, still no deaths. Oh, good. Okay. 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 I mean, traumatizing, but at least I'm glad they survived. Yes. So in 1901, so right after it was burned down, I guess the city was like, do we rebuild or like, what do we do with this property? And I saw something where like the city was like offering money to someone like a stipend or something to buy out the property. I don't totally know what happened, but at any rate, R.L. Palmer in 1901 ended up buying the burnt out building and rebuilding and lived there with his wife christina hey and their kids hazel and carlisle and then also christina's mom and brother renata and alex um oh my god you really just threw me for a loop there i was like <laughs> that 
I should remember that. <laughs> that is bananas. <laughs> so the reason that they decided to buy it out is they were like, well, let's make it another boarding house or let's at least make it a hotel for traveling salesmen because this property is only a block from the train station. So this mm-hmm. is about to be hippin', hoppin', and happening. That's right. And it was also, fun fact, one of the first buildings in the state, maybe the country, to have indoor plumbing and indoor and outdoor electricity. Oh, so, so if you were a traveling salesman and you wanted the ritzy experience, you'd want to go to the place with electricity and toilets and I, right I next to the train. If you're a pampered princess or a pampered empress. I wouldn't go anywhere else, and that's a fact. That's um, right. It, they also had a really large lobby for parlor games. They had a restaurant. They had a pub. Basically, it, they were trying to turn it into like a very fancy one-stop shop where if you were in town for business, the only place you needed to be was there. I'm sure I would not have been welcome there, but it sounds like a fun time. <laughs> you know, like I, if I, I were been. like I would bring my ta- my cat tarot for the parlor game and be like, <laughs> step aside. They would take one look at my female voice and my short hair and there'd be a shootout or something i don't know Uh, and i'd be holding the tarot cards like wait no (laughs) we're just trying to have some fun (laughs) um so yeah so they ended up having a, a big lobby so that way not only uh travelers would come here but also it was so fancy and one of the only places again with plumbing and electricity that even just townspeople would gather there so it was kind of just a place that everyone was bustling So some people think that the Palmer house, uh, remember it burnt down and then they rebuilt. So some people think that the Palmer house is actually sitting on the original foundations from the sock center house, which might explain some of the ghosts that I see. Mm -hmm. So fun fact, um, Arthur, no, not Arthur author, uh, God, this is so stupid because he's a famous person. Author Sinclair Lewis. <laughs> See, this is a kind of <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the kind of thing. Um, if you're not into it, maybe check out Rituals because right. while, it's so polished over there. While we record, I know <laughs> polished is not a word you ever thought you'd associate with our names or voices. But while we are recording, we have a wonderful producer, Jonathan, who will literally just be in the background and then hop in and be like. Hey, Christine, uh, actually, it's pronounced this way. Or can you can you guys just say that line one more time so we have like a clean... And it's he'll, so He'll nice. interrupt us and be like, um, yeah, you're going to have to do that part all over. But in such <laughs> a I'm nice like, way that like yeah. it doesn't feel like we're being... We're definitely being like coached in a way that we shouldn't have to be after five years of podcasting. But like it's really nice to have somebody uh, who's kind of just like... Ding dong. Like, um. <laughs> it's very nice. I guess they they must be editing on the fly for him to be like, I know this isn't going to fucking land. So, <laughs> Or he can just take one listen and be like, yeah, start out. Take two. <laughs> yeah, this is not uh, up to our, our caliber. Like That's his author, not Arthur. I can read that. Let's do it again. <laughs> so author Sinclair Lewis was actually, so fun fact, Sock Center was his uh, boyhood hometown is this sock like like a like a sock on your foot pronounced like sock spelled s-a-u-k oh that's not what i pictured okay and i think center is also the s-e-n-t-r-e bullshit s-e-n sorry c-e-n oh 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 center like center like like oh beautiful like a shoppy like a shop shop yeah (laughs) you get it okay okay, i get it (laughs) it's like instead of bakery they're going like patisserie and i'm like like, okay now i'm just throwing french around left and right so anyway sock center but i'm sure it was like something much fancier at one time (laughs) and i know it's pronounced sock center because at one point there was a diner there or it's now called nick's diner but at one point it was a different restaurant they called it the sock hop now see that i would okay I'm so glad you said that because as you were telling me about how to actually spell sock, I was like, there's so much room for fun (laughs) nicknames, for fun punny restaurants. I'm so pleased about this. Well, apparently Nick bought him out. Wait, yeah, wait. Well, what the heck? Nick Nick was like, I'd rather put my name up there. Yeah. (laughs) He was like, I want something much more creative than sock hop. How about Nick's diner? (laughs) Um, One and only. So... Sinclair Lewis not only is Sock Center his childhood hometown, but he actually worked at the Palmer Hotel. He was a night clerk and a bellboy there. Wow. He apparently got, quote, hired and fired multiple times. LOL. Um, and allegedly, I only saw this in one place, but allegedly he had a secret hideaway that he'd run off to in the basement to write poems. 
That um, sounds like something I would do and get fired for my job at the library because I yeah. was hiding and writing poems. I wonder why he was getting fired. I wonder if like we're trying to just turn it into a creative thing of like, oh, he was just working so hard on being a famous author one day. I don't know. It's, it's but, kind of a cute little, I like it. But here's the thing. As we go on to the ghosts, you're going to find out that if he had a secret hideaway in the basement to write poems, you will realize no one would have ever wanted to be in the basement alone. So I see. So I don't know how true that is. Mm -hmm. um, fun fact, though, he did use this hotel as inspiration for the Minimashi house, Minimashi house in his 1920 novel. What's wrong with me? In his <laughs> 1920 novel called Main Street and the whole town in that book is apparently also inspired by Sock Center. How fun. Which is fun. If I were to write a book that was exclusively about one town, because we just wrote a book about many towns, <laughs> uh, I would absolutely use Fredericksburg as my inspiration. And I you would name you would name the restaurant the Sock Hop. Hmm. Fred. Fredericks. You'd name it Fred's Diner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a fun Fredericksburg is oh, like kind Fredericks of Fredericks Burgers. That's true. We have we have seen many a Fredericksburger on a menu in our town. Oh, okay. So. Well, so I'm not that clever. All right, I, I'll work. We'll, on shop it. It. we'll shop it. We'll shop it. We'll it. shop it. Um, but yeah. So fun fact: the Minimashi House. I hope I'm saying that right. Minimashi House was uh, inspired by the Palmer Hotel. So originally, the building had 25 to 30 guest rooms and one shared bathroom. Super. I'm already in hell. Uh, <laughs> then. At the Palmer House, I guess, was getting older. It started looking rough. Um, during Prohibition, liquor was sold here in the basement, so that kept up some revenue, I think. Um, I, I think that also caused rumors that there's tunnels under the ground. Mm. Could also be if there was a hideaway in the basement Sinclair Lewis was using, maybe it went down to the tunnels. I oh, maybe. And they'd pass him while he's writing a poem, like, with their rum running, like, passing with liquor, bootleg. And he's now like, that's oh, a I'm crossover. Sorry. I'm just writing a haiku. <laughs> Don't mind me. It's uh, the, the real juxtaposition between good and evil, I guess. Beautiful, right? Uh, in 1916, the hotel's new owners expanded the building. And so I think it might have still only had one bathroom at the time. I hope not if you're really going to put that much money into renovating. And then uh, time traveling to 1974, the Palmer House Hotel started growing even bigger because two men decided that they were going to restore it. And... During this time, this was one of the first mentions of the hotel having ghosts mm. um, because one of the two men who decided to restore it, he started writing about spirits being there. Okay. So I, I do want to say that was in 1974 that apparently we have the first documented ghosts. But I am going to tell a story in a couple bullets here that implies there were ghosts earlier than that. So um, in 1993, the building was remodeled again with its new owners at the time and still current owners as far as i know uh in 1993 it was bought by the freeze family and they remodeled the whole place to go down from like 30 rooms down to 19 much bigger rooms oh. and they all had their own individual bathrooms so nice. thank you for making that call all right now m uh emperor m will show up all <laughs> pampered and will finally be happy m purr um, there's a lot that's happening and i'm there's hesitant. a lot of chaotic energy happening I'm, today I'm hesitantly on board for now <laughs> hesitantly on board is really like <laughs> my constant feeling that's how we feel most of the time on this show uh where okay so then in 2002 the palmer house once again stood empty and threatened to be condemned i feel like i gave the wrong year because the freeze family has had the, it since the 90s and they have still been there Hmm. I think that was, I used the wrong date. And then because I thought it's a 2002, I moved it to a different place. Excuse me. Sorry. Before the nineties, it once stood empty and was threatened to be condemned. And then in 1993, the freeze family came in Understood. remodeled it. Blah, 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 blah. Now it has bathrooms. <clears throat> now it has bathrooms. So, uh, income Brett and Kelly freeze. And apparently they bought it originally with another couple, but then they ended up backing out or selling their share. Um, so now it's just Brett and Kelly freeze and, uh, they've had the place ever since they host paranormal events here and mm -hmm. they even held their first lecture here in 2008. 
And it seems like Kelly is much more attached than Brett because anytime there has been an interview or media, like any press about this house, I think I've seen Brett once and I saw Kelly the entire time or all of the quotes are from her. Right. Um, and she feels very committed to sticking with this house, no matter how dark and sinister it gets. So Ooh. I personally feel like there's a bit of an attachment issue happening there um, because things get really fucking scary and she is not moving. She is very committed to staying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so like I said earlier, there's no documented deaths inside this building, but there are some rumored deaths on the property as well as reports of death nearby that could be contributing to the ghosts. Um, one is that all the way back in the early 18, I think it was 1890, uh, someone bought the house who he was originally a soldier and he was a part of like one of the bloodier battles that ended up being um his oh, what was his name cassius sprague was his Whoa. name and i guess he was a soldier that was involved in one of the bloodiest battles uh and he was also involved in the worst m mass execution in <gasps> our history where 38 native americans were hanged <gasps> yeah um, as in he was like one of the perpetrators of this. Oh, he event. was not on the right side of history. No. Oh, yikes. Okay. Um, there are rumors. If you watch the dead files episode, he may or may not be the evil spirit that resides here. Wow. Um, and that's all we really know about him, except that he ended up selling the house to the Palmers later and making a bunch of money on it. But, um, yeah, not a good guy. And I think the idea is that because he just came with such negative energy when he bought the house, maybe some of that energy stayed. I don't totally know. Or maybe he died there and he was so evil in real life that he's now his evil is haunting the house today. Yeah. Um, maybe he was attached to it like Kelly is in and, and came back. Maybe. After maybe. Especially because if that were in the 1890s, mm -hmm. uh, there are hints of ghosts being there. No Bef way. Even before then. So I know I said earlier that in 1974 is the first documented ghost stories, uh -huh. but there is rumors that there were ghosts at least into the set into the 1870s. Cool. Because there was one guy that worked there um, who was terrified of the ghosts at the hotel, according uh, allegedly. So. Wow. There, so in theory, there were ghosts even then, which is wild because what would a ghost look like in 1870? Like. Were they haunting you exactly the same or have they gotten more creative in the last 200 years or what? Interesting. Like, is it the same thing? Now, when we see like an old timey ghost, we see them a lot of times like from the 1800s. So yeah. So like, that, what were they seeing? Yeah. Like what, what was the old timey was like the, I don't know. And I will never know this, but who was the oldest, who was the very first apparition ever seen? And what mm. did that person look like? Like a pirate? Like, I, like, I don't know. <laughs> A, co a co little pilgrim? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there were definitely Obviously, people well before pilgrims. I know, but... my shitty American education. But um, um, I In my like... head, if I were going to be haunted in America, I feel like, I don't know, natives, I suppose? I don't know. I don't know. I also... Well, anyway. Oh, go ahead. It also makes me wonder if, like, um, spirits across different cultures are are the same you know what i mean like do they mm -hmm. haunt in the same way like maybe certain mm. cultures perceive spirits in afterlife in a certain way and that like manifests in their own yeah way and we we see it differently i don't know but also remember there was that chunk of england where like or i don't know if it was specifically england but i feel like there was a time and a place where there was a huge uh it was just all reports of like just random knocking on walls. That was like the whole thing. Like, I think it was during like the <laughs> Jeff, the talking mongoose era. I feel like I went through a, an air, like a part of, and that's why we drank where every story I covered was from the same time period in the same location. And they were all the same type of haunts. And so now I'm like, <laughs> were they faking it? Or was that a cultural thing? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Um, okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So in 1870, the guy that worked, uh, at the hotel who was scared of the ghosts even mm -hmm. then this is where the story gets pretty fucked up and this is where i knew that i have done the notes before because i made the same comments that i'm about to make okay so in 1870 this 
guy who worked there, he was also a freed slave named Mose, and he lived on the property and also worked on the property. He was terrified of the ghosts um, that were in this hotel. And the story I heard, not the story I am have yet to translate for you, the story I heard is that uh, some of the local people who knew he was scared of ghosts dressed up like ghosts and chased him out of the hotel one day as a prank. Wow, how hilarious. The way I'm taking it, which is a complete guess and there is no proof, but I have a feeling that that is a very whitewashed version of there were racist people who didn't like a freed slave there and they dressed up in white. Do you catch my drift? White sheets that have holes in the eyes. (laughs) Yeah. And chased him out of the building. It sounds like that is a very plausible thing that could have happened. Yeah. At the very least, um, there are parallels that cannot be ignored, is what I would say. So That is the truth. And so also that makes me wonder, were there ghosts in the 1870s he was scared of? Or was this part of the story that got telephoned to us? Interesting. Yeah. Um, anyway, he ended up running away and he was so scared to come back, even, which, by the way, like... I know it was 1870, but he could see they were people dressed in sheets. So he would know they weren't ghosts and be too scared to go back. Yeah. And yet he was too scared to go back. Right. That says something for sure. Yeah. To a point where he chose instead to sleep outside in the cold and rain that night. Cool. Great. And came back the next day, very sick and died on the property. So you tell me what happened. (sighs) Nothing fucking good. Nothing good. So, um, anyway, that's, it's a very different story than what, uh, I think happened, but what year another, was that? that was 1870. Okay. It was five years after the emancipation proclamation. <sighs> so you tell me, I'm not gonna, cause I don't have the authority to, but I don't like any of it. So I'll tell mm-hmm. you that much. And so in, 1929, another death near the property was Jason Rosenberger, uh, which to me, someone named Jason in the 1920s is silly. That is a weird combo. Feels like a millennial name. Jason. So uh, he was a cop who was working next door. And one night, I guess while on the job, I guess he got confronted by someone. He ended up getting shot in his (gasps) eye. (gasps) And uh, the death feels like a cover up because they were saying it was like his like an accident on his end like with his own gun but like i guess the bullet didn't match his gun or something so it feels like a cover-up um and also i feel like the 1920s in minnesota wasn't that like that was like mobster territory right i feel like something could have happened with a cop i'm not sure i really don't know much about minnesota history well 1920s was prohibition right so i feel like there was definitely some shady stuff going on so I feel like something in Minnesota was happening with gangsters. I don't know why I would know that. But so anyway, he ends up getting shot in the eye. And then all of a sudden his murder was completely covered up. Um, and he died 500 feet from the property. And the last person to see him alive was a night clerk at the hotel. Jesus. Okay. In the 1950s, uh, there was a man who allegedly hanged himself in the bar by jumping off of the pool table. <sighs> And he was found the next morning. And then in this, I think it was the 70s or 80s where another person allegedly died upstairs uh, by suicide. When was the alleged hanging? The 50s. Okay. Um, So those are the only deaths that we, that have circulated enough that they may or may not be true. Okay. Um, And so now it's just the ghosts. So when Brett and Kelly first bought the place, they were not local. So they didn't know the history of the building. They didn't even know the place might be haunted. Uh, they only found out later when locals started telling them, yeah, this place is probably really fucking haunted. Um, and they heard it after things had been happening to them, but they hadn't said anything publicly. And so then all these locals were kind of confirming that's telling too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when I would buy a house and be like, this house is hella haunted. Let's buy it. I would buy a brand new house and be like, there's <laughs> hundreds would. of ghosts here. I know. <laughs> um, so when they first got the place, they needed to do some like basic maintenance. So Kelly's father decided to stay there um, and do maintenance throughout the day and the night um, just to get things started for them. So he was staying at the hotel by himself. And pretty much right away, he started hearing, quote, someone roaming around upstairs right above uh, rooms 18 and 19. 
uh, who would have heavy footsteps pacing before it sounded like someone sat on the bed. <gasps> and to a point where he was convinced that Kelly had rented other rooms out and didn't tell him. Oh, you know, and I feel like it's always so undersold or not undersold necessarily, but it it's so much scarier than it sounds to hear footsteps like mm -hmm. like growing up at my dad's house constantly heard footsteps up and down the stairs, which were right outside my house. I mean, outside my bedroom. And there is something so petrifying about being like somebody is walking up the stairs toward my bedroom you know i'm like i remember terrifying. i remember as a kid the first couple times i stayed home alone i was already on edge and i don't know what happened but the like wall of suitcases that we had all came crashing down by themselves no and for all i know something slipped or whatever but i remember thinking someone broke into this fucking house and my what am i gonna do i'm 12 that's so the fear it's like it's it's either a real person or it's like some fucking ghost and it's like neither one is good. Yeah, it's like which are you hoping it is at that point? Yikes. <laughs> so uh but yeah, no, there's really you're totally right. There's something really uh eerie, dark uh, about n knowing something. It you feel completely like gaslit of like, like yes, yes, I'm I like know helpless. I'm hearing this. I know yes. I'm hearing this. Yes. Boy. Uh so one day uh, they're working at the hotel and a stranger approaches Kelly and says that she had a dream of this place and oh that boy. a man came to her and said it was time for his story to be told. Oh boy. And basically, and that she was weirdly descriptive about her dream and said that there was a body under the stairs. Oh my God. So Kelly, I don't know, was open-minded enough that later that day she went down to the stairs in the basement and used a spoon from the kitchen and started digging and she found rib bones. No. Uh, she didn't get to find out if they were human or animal, but she went to go grab a box or she went to go tell her husband or something. Basically, when she came back, they were gone. What? She never found them again. They were gone. They were gone. So oh. I don't know if the ghost like made them vanish because oh, they finally... my rib. I've been looking for that. Right. Thank you. Like, <laughs> did they like fade away because they'd finally been found and their story was told? Or did he like shove them back into the hiding place? Did he put them somewhere else? Especially if ghosts are known to like make things disappear and then show up in random spots. Imagine you just wake up and there's like a rib bone on God's your toilet. sake. There's just like a rib in the hallway. Yeah. Um, what if you got ribs delivered and then he snuck one of the ribs the onto ribs. your plate? Forget it. In the ribs. Okay, but my other thought is, you thought ghost. I was thinking, like, is somebody in the fucking tunnels? Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. See, I don't this like is that. why I'm team ghost and you're team true crime. I know. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, here are now just a list of all the things that people have experienced with ghosts. Um, oh, by the way, I also told that story first to maybe hint at, like, maybe she had disturbed people remains you know sure okay or well, to be fair maybe, he was like hey go find my remains right that's what i'm kind of thinking too i'm like did she do the right thing or the wrong thing i wonder well he said my story needs to be told so i'm like i feel like it just gave me more questions right like, like your story, story only became more muddled to me hmm. like like because of all the potential rumored deaths we've heard of didn't know about ribs no didn't Maybe it was like a prohibition thing. Like someone got killed in the tunnels that are also may or may not be there. I don't totally right. understand. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, as for all the ghost stuff, it's a list, my friends. So people smell cigar smoke in one of the rooms. They feel random breezes in the middle of a room that doesn't have a draft. Spirits will show up in pictures. Furniture will move on its own. Uh, sometimes people have seen it move by itself mm -hmm. instead of just hearing it. Equipment malfunctions or drains its own batteries and will turn itself on and off, including like audio recorders and cameras. So if you're there to investigate, it will just shut all your shit off, mm -mm. which is like a, an investigator's worst nightmare. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, ima I imagine that would not be ideal. Can you imagine you put in all the work to like research and set up and investigate and that place? Everything. And then you and then you go check all the footage and it's just a black screen and you're like, well, that was for nothing. I mean, as people who worked in TV, like that's a nightmare whether there are ghosts or not, you know? Oh, right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> people get touched, stroked, poked, pinched, slapped, shoved, Ooh. their hair yanked, snuggled, Ooh. and people feel paralyzed. Ooh. 
as in they cannot move when they feel something dark is in the room with them. Okay. People have experienced overwhelming sadness and just started crying for no reason, have been like inconsolable. Mm -hmm. People have felt um, pressure on their chest and tightness, like they're having a hard time breathing, like someone's sitting on their chest. Mm -hmm. um, one guy felt something cuddle him in bed and then run their fingertips on his chest. Blech. And as the fingertips were stroking his chest, he said it felt, quote, like being shocked by an electric fence. What? Oh, that's very intense. So it's like, uh, it's like the worst of both because you're getting cuddled and held while also being electrocuted. So like, and what? of course he said he felt paralyzed and couldn't get away. Of course. Um, multiple people have felt something push on the back of their knees so they'll fall. <laughs> <laughs> um even on stairs oh wait that's not funny that's not funny no 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 <laughs> as we laugh as um laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's only funny now that I, I know they're okay so it is a little funny it's funny when we know it's not supposed to be funny <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not funny it's not funny and i'm not although, laughing although i will say it was like a really good prank in college i don't know on why the but the stairs it, not on the stairs oh the yeah stairs. anywhere else i find it quite hilarious but the stairs <laughs> is like mm, a little much it was a little much uh people have gotten straight up jumped by something oh god not funny that one's not funny no um especially in the basement uh some people have potentially even been possessed so in the ghost adventures episode oh, yeah. which that's, is season I knew that's where we were going mm -hmm. On Discovery Plus, it was season eight, episode four, but I don't know. I've had issues with Discovery Plus having accurate episode numbers. The different so, numbers, yeah. So on Discovery Plus, it's eight four. Uh, they actually show the clip of that investigator who got possessed during their own oh, night there. I thought you were going to say it was ZB got possessed. That's nah. where I thought we were going. No, but they showed the clip and had the investigator on the show. Oh. And the investigator was very scared i'm not i'm a kid it would have freaked me the fuck out if it were the middle of the night and this happened the investigator was not blinking like wide eyes and kept muttering you need to talk to me the dogs are down here and i've got to take care of them <sighs> Ew, i just got goose camp it's even creepier when you realize that the palmer's son there's some mention on some sources that he used to take care of dogs down in the basement oh shit. carlisle carlisle uh, they even, so they talked to her and she said she felt like she could see it happening, almost like an astral projection, but she couldn't control it at all. Oh no. Um, and then they bring her down to the basement where it happened. And then when they have like one of the meters next to her, it was a Mel meter. Uh, when they had it anywhere near her, it started spiking and making that high pitch noise. And as they got closer and closer, it started getting like to be a higher and higher pitch. And eventually they just handed her the machine and it was like off the fucking charts <gasps> the whole time. It wasn't just like a chirp. Oh, it no. stayed on at a high pitch until they gave it back. Oh, no. Um, so it's almost like something is inside of her or stayed yeah, with what? her yeah, or, or like at uh, least remembered her around her. Or, yeah. Yikes. I don't know. They were into her energy, I guess. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what a nice pickup line <laughs> energy. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, so she, she, it was, that was really fucking scary to be honest. And, yeah. um, the one that is evil in the basement is alleged. Well, I don't know if it's the one that's evil in the basement, but there is an evil one allegedly named Raymond, uh, on dead files. They called him skeleton face. Yikes. <laughs> and so they think he's the one that is jumping people. So oh my God, Kelly, who owns the place, says that she's gotten jumped uh, by Raymond in the basement. Uh, here's a quote. It was like I could see somebody with a dark cape come up to me. And in the next instant, I had a hard time swallowing. I just felt a choking sensation around my neck. But I kept saying out loud, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Oh, I'd be like, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, girl, I'm out. I'm out. I'm girl. out. <laughs> um, Raymond, girl, Rolex, I'm out of your hair. You can have this basement back. <laughs> Ray, it's time to go. Um, Ray, honey, take your rib. I'm not. I don't want it. <laughs> uh, and so uh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, and then on Dead Files, apparently the medium was also experiencing like she kept saying like he's trying to jump me and i'm not letting him but he's trying to attack me like he did kelly oh geez um and then 
other people that they interviewed have also said that they felt like they were getting jumped by this thing. Like, if you go to the basement, you just don't know if you're going to get attacked. Like, it feels like a man is attacking you. I don't like that at all, at all, at all. People also have had mood swings, especially the staff who have to be there all the time. Um, They get irritable with each other. Um, People get nauseous. They have headaches. Sometimes they have flu-like symptoms that just come and go in that day. Mm. Uh, Kitchen items will move on their own. Trays will be found in different places. A mixing bowl flew 10 feet across the room. Mm. In the bar, glasses will fly around. They have smashed on site, and you can hear clinking throughout the room. A glass bottle has also exploded on its own, and silverware always changes position or goes missing to a point where staff don't even put out silverware anymore, or if they do, it's right before people sit down. Wow. (laughs) They're like, keep your eye on this. Yeah. They like, they're like, they're like, without question, the silverware will always go missing or rearrange itself. So weird. And, you know, the other day, my, well, this morning, my stepdad came over and said, you know, we found one of your forks and spoons in our driveway. And I was like, Oh, what? He was like, yeah, we found one of your forks and spoons in our driveway. And um, like normally, I mean, not normally, but some might say, oh, wow, how spooky. I say. Did you I just know. drop it out of your purse? Uh, well. <laughs> like entire, your social security card? Entirely possible. However, I also have a 17-year-old sister who likes to snack at my house. And uh-huh. I guess sometimes decides she wants to take her snacks on the road. Now, I can't seem to figure <laughs> out what she was eating with a fork and a spoon in her car that then ended up in the driveway. But the only thing I can think of that you eat, eat with a fork and a spoon is spaghetti. Have you had spaghetti recently in her car? Like, <laughs> like while I've she's eaten driving? Some, I hate to say it, but I am a complex eater when I drive. So uh, me too. But like, if I'm eating spaghetti, you better believe I'm just shoveling it in a car. Okay. I'm, yeah, that's I'm true. Like, I'm not, I'm I don't like, care about ooh, etiquette I don't at that care point. About the etiquette or whatever. You know what I mean? I feel like, I feel like the spoon Maybe and the fork it was may have two been different, foods. different instances. Yeah. And then at one day she was like, I don't want this in my car. So I guess I'll put it on the floor, which sounds like a very me thing to do. I'll keep it this here the family. on the ground for now. <laughs> but, but but anyway, so when you said like silver going missing, I'm like, hmm, how intriguing. It's and just I, Francisca the whole time. She's just like eating snacks, Takis uh, with a fork, I guess. <laughs> Um, anyway, so I just thought of that, but I always do wonder because I feel like in these stories, a lot of times it maybe silverware is easy for spirits to manipulate because I feel like it happens a lot where silverware like moves or goes missing. Maybe it's light enough. I also wonder like metal. It's metal. Yeah. I was going to say maybe there's something like there's a material property to it that makes it Mm. easier for them to to touch or that they're drawn to. Like, you know how dowsing rods, like they can get drawn to that. I wonder if. Yes. Like, oh, I just bought a new set. Anyway, we'll talk about that another time. Um, But yeah, like copper. I know that that's uh, strong. Anyway. uh, Or maybe they're like, they're like moths and it's just shiny. Shiny. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so people also hear screaming, moaning, growling, whispering, cussing, their own names being called, all types of voices, male, woman, uh, male, female, children. Um, they hear something mimicking their coworkers when That's they're alone. Gross. Many employees have heard their name getting called in another room when they're the one closing for the night. <laughs> People can hear knocking on the walls and the doors, children playing in the hallway late at night when no children are staying at the house. No. Um, people have heard a kid's ball bouncing down the hallway many times. That's like a very common one. Weird. People have straight up heard explosions. What? Like a bomb went off. I'm wondering if that was like if it was from like gangster saloon brothel time. Maybe it was a gunshot that they're hearing. Oh, maybe when you showed up and they were like, what did you say earlier? Then a gun Oh, a guy got shot in the eye. Oh, that too. But I meant when you were, um, you were like, if I showed up with my voice oh, and my it, hair, a shootout. Yeah, they, I walked in with short hair, and then you heard the phantom explosion of shootout. people's minds blowing up. <laughs> I also wonder with the explosion sound. Um, I already lost. Oh, with the fire, like oh. maybe during a fire, like things like pop and explode, and I don't know. yeah. And also there's that one mysterious fire. So for all we know, like it was something made up go boom, you know, I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. So there's also people get a lot of EVPs. Some that I found in different outlets were you little boy, <sighs> which there is a little boy people claim to see. Okay. Do you like me? Not really. Get lost. Okay. <laughs> Want you whore. 
<gasps> mm. Woof. Yeah. That's bad. In a turn of events, there's also a female EVP of someone saying happy birthday to a guest on her birthday. Really? That one I like. Well, that's lovely. Uh, I'm wondering if that is the ghost named Lucy, because she apparently hates men and the guest was a woman. So I will talk about Lucy in a second, but I like to think maybe it was her. I, I do know. too. Why not? Or a, or a kid or something. Um, people feel, and also like, are you shocked that any of the female spirits don't like men if this used to be a brothel? <laughs> so, <laughs> And if pe- somebody is also saying whore or whatever, yeah, yeah, clearly they're not having a great time with whoever that is. So uh, maybe they just saw that there was like a girl's weekend on someone's birthday. And she was like, I'm here for the fun. Happy mm-hmm. birthday, girl. Have fun. Um, so people feel drawn to certain areas. One person was drawn down the hallway and then heard a voice say, come here. No, but <laughs> First of all, Forget you're already it. being drawn. You yeah. don't need to say it out loud. Like, I'm already <laughs> right. coming. Right. We don't need a, a full 4D experience. <laughs> um, 4D experience. <laughs> A surround sound experience. So Dolby Digital. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, people feel, oh yeah, people feel drawn to the area. Employees have quit because their mood shifts have been so strong and they get super irritable. People get angry. People get sick for no reason. All of the rooms can get either scorching hot and or ice cold within mm. minutes of each other. One, ta- uh, one investigative team actually got a range in one room alone. In a span of 20 minutes, the room went from 65 degrees to negative one. Sorry, negative one? Yeah, goodbye. Like, zero wasn't good enough. Okay. <laughs> like, we're going to uh, go right past. <laughs> wow. Uh, faucet water will change its own temperature. Toilets will flush on their own. Bathroom floors get mysteriously wet. Heavy phantom items will drop in the shower. So you'll think, like, a full bottle of shampoo fell in the shower and there's nothing That's there. That's weird. That's really weird. Remotes, phones, and keys will all go missing. Lights and TVs will flicker by themselves. Mm. Uh, Books have been known to open and close themselves when you leave the room. Mm -mm. The lobby lamps will turn on by themselves. The gas fireplace and the pub will light itself even when it's not, even when it's not functional. That's not, oh, and also not safe. And super not safe. You would think like after four fires, these ghosts would figure it out. Honestly. Uh, a door and a broom have both been leaning on a wall uh, and then fallen on their own in a way that they had to get lifted off to, to fall. Uh, the, by the way, I don't know if you heard that a door. A do- I did. A door leaning against the wall, I guess it was like a spare door. Right. Lifted off the wall and then fell the other way. Can you imagine the slam that that would have the, made? And then the broom is like, um, I'm falling too. Wee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I, I insist on personifying every inanimate object. I can't stop myself. Very uh, Hersene Shifter of you. It is. And to I be so, so attached so, to random things. So sorry By the way, that. last night I took a break from doing my notes and watched the part where you realized all over again that it what I've was going on. I've never watched it. You've never watched it? Christine, no. it's so good. I gotta it's watch so it. It's so good. Uh, I also like... I'm not, I, I, let's call me a, a pampered diva or whatever it is, but like pat on the back. I forgot how fucking good that episode was. Yeah, that it was, was amazing. People I, were like beside themselves about it. I really did stay up all night. I, the, I remember originally having a completely different story until like six o'clock at night, That's the night before. Happens. And then I was like, it's Christine's 30th. I got to do something. And I was like, what if she was the cryptid? And I went, oh, here we go. It's one of those moments where you're like, well, <laughs> God damn it. Dumb brain coming up it's, with ideas. Yeah, it's like, I know. It's exactly. an idea I can't ignore. If I do, I'll regret it for the rest of my damn life. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Anyway, we should definitely uh, watch that together. We the, should do uh, a little commentary track on Twitch or something. Do a little, Oh, that like, would be great. Wouldn't okay, that be fun? Wow. Who are you, fucking Zandy Schieffer? I'm trying, and this poor guy, everything he does, I'm like, let me try it. Like, I, he, I can't give him one thing to himself. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, anyway, back to you personifying the broom going, we. And I feel uh, bad about the broom, by the way, because I feel like he <laughs> kind of got overshadowed. But anyway, that's besides the he point. He didn't, though, because he made it onto ghost adventures and the door did not well 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 because he got lifted uh when the ghost was mad at aaron so (laughs) (laughs) okay i'm loving this i'm loving this so uh doors also slam shut even when they've been propped up or wedged in a way that they cannot close and haven't closed in days Mm. and then the second 
you're in the room, the door will slam shut on its own. Lovely. Sounds, there are sounds of furniture being moved around. There's a sound of parties being thrown upstairs. There's walking and pacing in the room above you, including in vacant rooms and places where there are no rooms above you, but you can still Ugh. hear as if someone is living up there. No, no thanks. People have also heard heavy, like, 30-pound weights dropped on the floor. They've heard people getting into bed, again, in rooms where there is no room. That is freaky. There's a ghost cat that meows. And oh. by the way, it's me, the empress. <laughs> you're, just empress. A, you're just looking at all your many bathrooms, counting them <laughs> one by one. <laughs> uh, and the cat meows and jumps onto your bed. And actually, one time they even thought that they heard a cat during an investigation. And so they took a picture of the dark room and later saw two little cat eyes in the oh, picture. Oh, you just want part some of- fancy feast. Part of me wants to think it's precious and part of me thinks it's like a, what's a harbinger for death or an oh, escort. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, here's the creepiest one for me. There's a snowman decoration in the basement that they bring up for Christmas. Ah! That's like, uh, that is it's... terrifying. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Thank you for sharing The that. holidays. No. <laughs> that vulnerable moment with me. <laughs> they, uh, but it's like a five foot snowman uh, yeah, and no. it dances when you plug it in. And here's the thing. It dances when it's not plugged into. Well, f- fuck off with that. I want nothing to. D- I don't <laughs> want it dancing when it's plugged in. I don't want it dancing ever. Uh, people have seen many apparitions. Uh, many are scary as shit. Shadow people. Oh man, I had a picture I wanted to show you of it. Let me. Do you? Mm, no, we don't have a lot of time. It just know it was really. It was like shadow people on the ceiling shadow people coming out of doors shadow people crawling on si- on the sides of the walls Ew. and that was the interpretation of the medium from uh dead files yuck she said that others looked fragmented one of them looked like it was dripping chunks of tar Whoa. people also see a tall and skinny shadow man dressed in 1930s clothing standing in front of your uh bed at night nice cool cool there's a woman in a red head wrap that has been seen and also in pictures has been seen in pictures and in real life, um, has been seen through the years, especially in crowds when the hotel has an event and they think that that's Hazel Palmer, the daughter. Oh, um, shadow figures are everywhere. There are multiple, multiple reports of people just casually seeing them fly around. Some of them are as tall as the door frame. Ugh. Uh, there's a, the apparition of a little boy with dirty blonde hair and green eyes who is seen all over the stairs. And they think he's the one bouncing a ball in the Aww. hallway. Um, kids also actually see this little boy by themselves and ask to go play with him. Oh God. They think it might be Carlisle, um, Palm, Mr. Palmer's son. Also in, there's a rumor that in the early, early 1900s, a boy allegedly died from the flu, according to one source. So that Aww. they might be the same, might be a different boy. In room 12, there's a spirit of a maid working there uh, who Kelly calls Jacqueline. In one source, there's also a woman in a wedding dress. There's a figure playing the uh, the lobby's piano. Mm -hmm. Allegedly, the spirit of Louis Sinclair is there. Uh, There's photos of solid apparitions in the mirror reflections with you. Nah, no thanks. The apparitions look so real that you wouldn't even know that they weren't guests and the staff have walked up to them to talk to them and ask if they needed help. And then they disappear. Um, One of the best testimonies that I've seen from an employee is one that was closing up for the night. And this is his story. Quote, closing up in the pub. And I was startled to see a young man standing at the bar. He was a nice enough looking guy in his mid twenties. And he asked if I, if he could get a beer, I said, I thought so. And checked out the taps to be sure that they didn't lock at night. Seeing that they did work. I asked what kind of beer he would like. And he asked what my choice would be. I jokingly said, I like the brand with the canoe handle. He laughed and said, that would be fine. He said, what do I owe you? And I told him I have no idea because I was the night clerk and not a bartender. Okay. I I was like, is this bartender? I forgot he was not a bartender. I was like, he, need to get some training (laughs) he's not good at this i asked him if two dollars sounded fair and he gave me a ten dollar bill oh oh now we have another problem i told him i don't have access to the to any change so i told him that he would either have to have four more beers to give me all ten dollars or he could see if he had any other money he checked his pockets and came up with five quarters. I explained that it was his lucky night and that the beer happened to be on sale for one twenty five. <laughs> I was still trying to figure out where this guy came from. He gave me the quarters, thanked me, and went to the lobby. He headed up the stairs, and clearly this guy was a hotel guest. 
The next evening, Kelly, the owner, was there, and I laughingly revealed my ghost story from the previous night, and she went a little white and disappeared for a few minutes. None of the rooms that night had been slept in. No one had checked in, no one had checked out, and the beer glass was never found. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. I Like, it was going to be creepy if it was like, oh, no, nobody with that description is staying here. But, like, nobody was staying there. He and was the glass alone. vanished, probably along with a f- couple forks. And the imagine spoon. having a- <laughs> and, and Francisco was in the corner. Hey. I, can you imagine just not even talking to like like you're having a full blown conversation That's with someone wild. who is completely which it's like talk about an intelligent spirit of like it is speaking back to you. It is thinking, producing thought regurgitating words and, also, and having a conversation with it, you it wanted the beer but like it wanted the rest of that ten dollar bill it was like it's like i know i'm a ghost but i don't want to spend this whole ten dollar bill so here's five right. quarters i'm taking my ten dollar <laughs> bill back i'm like what is right. this ghost doing I, like it's so weird also i wonder like did the money look old like i don't know you would it's, think like the money from back then what's what's ten dollars in the 1800s you know, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he was like trying to do like a weird, like, look how powerful I am. Look at look at how alpha male I am with all my money, because I would imagine a ten dollar bill at that time was like, let me show you a crisp yeah, hundred like for my beer. Looked like an old timey person. And he said he looked like pretty normal. Right. That's also very weird. So then it's like, did this guy. It's one of those things where you don't even think about it of like ghosts from 2007 aren't even popular yeah. ghost stories yet. So maybe this yeah. guy died near the property or maybe he loved this hotel when he was alive and this is just a dude who died like 10 years ago who or maybe just a it's beer. a spirit that's just projecting as like uh, a youthful person like in disguise if they can pretend to be children you'd think they can pretend to be that's anybody so else. true Oy. at least you had like a pretty neutrally positive it seemed, yeah it experience. seemed like a pretty inane occurrence like nothing, <laughs> nothing yeah terrifying. <laughs> I wonder if like if it were smart enough to think about you know what to say next to this guy and to hand off money and blah blah blah. I wonder if it had thought like what's this guy gonna do when he realizes I'm not here? Or yeah, do you think like he even much? realized? Do you think he was in he's in denial and thought oh I'm actually here having a beer? Or do you maybe? Oi oi. That is so twisted. Yes. So room 22 is Raymond's room, the super bad guy. And you can hear things upstairs the whole time, even though there's no room above him. Mm. The most haunted rooms are 11 and 17, where people have been stroked while sleeping and they see the shadow man at the foot of their bed. Room 17 is Lucy's room, who was a former sex worker, and she hates men. She doesn't like people sitting in both chairs because if both chairs are taken up, then she has nowhere to sit. And where is she going to sit? Well, it's implied that then she would be forced to be on the bed as a former Uh, sex worker ha yeah so uh if both chairs are taken especially by men she gets mad slams doors and she has been seen in the chair smoking Mm. here's the thing she has been seen this is from one source and one source only but yikes she has been seen in the chair smoking and the left side of her face was completely beaten (gasps) and the right side of her face the scalp was hanging off of her (gasps) skull (gasps) Oh my god yeah who saw that and lived to tell about it because i don't think i think i would expire i don't think i would survive I couldn't tell you i'd be so traumatized knowing that on ghost adventures oh yeah yeah during the walkthrough let me of see rooms, your chair he destroyed that fucking room he was just he moved the chairs where she likes to sit blah 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 like (sighs) during the walkthrough of room 17 they asked the spirit box is there any danger for any of the people in this house and the spirit box literally laughed and said zach (laughs) bagans no it did not zach and bagans i'm not kidding like duh hello naturally zach then goes into lucy's room he messes up the room he picks up the mattress he throws the chairs around like what are you doing like have some fucking respect this person lived a life of trauma he literally even said that he was provoking the ghost so like yeah no shit and like this person clearly is stuck in a place that she is uncomfortable unhappy feels threatened and so you're gonna go in there and take advantage of that it really Mm -hmm. just this is what we talked about in the last week's episode like it's it's like fun we like to watch it but like this kind of thing it really it Mm -hmm. grinds my gears you know 
what was that other thing? He said something like the rain reminded him of orphans tears. <laughs> like, Oh my God. That's right. Oh my God. So anyway, and then he the goes rainbow the... reminds him of a little leprechaun. <laughs> 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 so uh, he goes into Lucy's room, messes up the room and the REM pod starts chirping like crazy. And you can tell it's this woman being like, all I have is this fucking chair. Can you just like, and like, she already hates men. I'm sure she saw him coming from a mile away and was like, ugh. Um, <laughs> the, the high pitched static, uh, then a high pitched static shock, which you can hear in real time, <gasps> apparently hits Zach and he feels like he got shocked. Ooh, which it is comes, what happened to that other person. Yeah. And it comes from nowhere. Mm. So, uh, then the spirit box in the same room literally says Aaron. Uh oh. Uh, and then. Zach says, what do you want to tell Aaron? And then in real life, everyone hears a growl. Hmm. Aaron says, what was that sound? And the spirit box says, a spirit. (laughs) Then the REM pod starts going crazy. And the spirit box says, Goodwin, which is Aaron's last name. Yeah. Okay. That's Um, not good. Like Aaron's in trouble. (laughs) He's in trouble, especially because then he was the only person that was able to hear footsteps in the hall behind him, leaving the room. And as almost as if the spirit had like been done with them and left the room (sighs) and he he heard the footsteps leaving down the hall and at the same time no more voices on the spirit box and the REM pod stopped chirping okay so almost to confirm like yeah no one was in the room with them anymore okay then in the the basement is known to have the worst energy uh many are terrified of that area this is where kelly got jumped the dark lores that people died down here in the fires i would like to put in my two cents and say that people probably also died there during prohibition, AKA fucking ribs. Um, the basement is not open to the public only for investigators. And Kelly has seen shadow people down here has also seen a black wolf with red eyes. What people have also heard barking. Um, and again, it's like, is that the demon wolf or are those the dogs that the Palmer (gasps) son took care of? Oh, That's right. Yeah. And I would think it's the dog that the dogs that the Palmer son is taken care of, especially because if you can hear the dogs barking and someone got possessed and the first thing it says is I have to take care of the dogs. Absolutely. Like-, like that clearly must be still still replaying or something. Yeah. So in the basement, Zach, gets super lethargic. He can't walk right. And then there's an EVP that says, make sure they go. They all hear footsteps and Zach gets scratched. At the same time, Billy uh, is upstairs at Nerve Center and he hears something walking around in the hall and on that same floor that he's on, the camera that he's checking starts flickering as if something is draining the battery. Mm. Here's the weird thing. In all the sources I found for news outlets, Kelly basically said that there were hundreds of ghosts, but all of them were pretty much harmless. And although she is a big advocate for respecting the ghosts and saying that, you know, please don't expect them to put on a show for you. Um, she also kept a journal for a while documenting all of the guests experiences and some can be still found on the Palmer website. Okay. Um, all the news outlets sounded like it was light and fun, but according to ghost adventures and, uh, dead files, that was where I saw all of this information that the ghosts are super bad, super evil. She's losing business and she's scared. And even mid interview on ghost adventures, Kelly starts having a panic attack and crying (gasps) while the Mel meter starts freaking out and everyone feels like they can't breathe. Oh my God. Then in that same interview in that same walkthrough with Zach, uh, they catch EVPs about Kelly saying I'm following her. (gasps) Zach says, tell us everything. And an EVP says, no. Then Zach says there are spirits here. And an EVP says they're coming to get you. (gasps) <gasps> and destination Jesus. and destination fear the medium uh th- these are all the things that she saw a skeleton man with sharp teeth who she thinks is the most aggressive of raymond. them all raymond uh she saw him holding a woman by the back of her neck <gasps> he apparently told her he was a murderer and he loved it and he wants to keep killing like he did when he was alive Oh, my God. Apparently, he's from the 1890s with a lot of money, which is why people think it might be that Cassius Spray guy, because he owned the place in the 1890s and Uh had a lot of money. Um, But she doesn't think it's the same person. Uh, She also saw a woman screaming and crying. She felt anxiety. The the (laughs) apparently she heard without having met Kelly, she could sense that the living woman here is getting pushed out. Uh, the skeleton man is trying to jump people, which she didn't know any of this stuff in advance. Okay. That's the, 
the beauty of dead files is that the medium just goes in completely cold and just says what she's thinking. Oh my God. That's what happens when chip coffee shows up on Kindred Spirits. <sighs> oh my God. It's the so, best. It's so much fun to watch them come in without knowing and like seeing what they see, you know? Well, and this is all the stuff she saw. And it's very eerie that she got 1890s, a guy with a lot of money. There was a lot of murder here. Um, the living woman here is getting pushed out. Something is trying to jump people. She said that she saw five to six shadow men that hang out upstairs. And she said that they are mentally ill in a way that is very dangerous. And they're probably people who have killed in the past. Oh my um, God. Which when living people stay in a home full of mentally unwell and unsafe spirits, they can begin acting erratic, which oh, is gosh. confirmed by Kelly saying all of my employees are acting really irritable. Oh gosh. She also sees smoke and can't breathe unknowing that there were four fires here. Uh -huh. She and she also senses a man who was shot in the eye. <gasps> no way. And that is the Palmer House Hotel. That is so, so specific. It's so specific. And also, I am so sorry that I was rapid firing as quick as I could. No, because no. I know you have your story to no, get to. No, I'm sorry. You felt like you had to rapid fire. I know. But wasn't that spooky? It was really spooky. And I've, um, I've never heard that. I don't think. And again, I say that with a grain, like, take that with a grain of salt, because you could probably tell me all of your stories and I'd be like, I've never heard that, but I really don't recognize it. Well, I want to say that I got this story suggestion from the Patreon Facebook group because I reached out and asked for suggestions because I haven't done that in a while. Yeah. And this was from uh, Jasmine, uh, cool. who said that, uh, I mean, they seemed apparent there ended up being a thread where other people were saying like, Oh, I saw like, uh, I know someone who got a full apparition of a little girl in a uh, nightgown there. And uh, they, I don't know, I opened it up. They didn't see her with their eyes. They were snapping photos randomly and caught it. Yep. Okay. So anyway, there was just a whole thread where people were saying, oh, you got to do this show or this, uh, this story. And I guess I haven't covered it here, but if I have, let me know. Interesting. Um, oh, I figured out where you did it. Where? I had a feeling the whole time and I... I figured it out. Where? It was your mor morbid episode. Oh, okay. I was like, I know I've fucking seen, Cause I've I done just, this before. Because I just looked it up and I saw uh, Lucy. It says, there are boys with no eyes, which like, I don't know what that's about, but <laughs> yikes. Um, Lucy won't take your shit. Oh, so that was probably, oh, there were three things you talked about. And so one of them was the Palmer House Hotel. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. Okay. Well, there you have it. That makes sense. Um, and I did. I did actually listen to that. So clearly I have heard the story and I just, huh. Look at us but go. I think when I'm not responding to it, it doesn't stick in my brain very well. I totally get it. Um, well, I love it. And I might also add that to my discovery plus watch list today. It is so. already in your queue, my girl, because I watched it on your account. You little, you just go to recently viewed Christine. You'll find it. You'll Empress. find it. What are you called? empress yes obviously. your empress the 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 pampered queen okay <laughs> um all right so i probably have to give you a recap of what story i'm doing because this is a part two is it oh wow okay <laughs> i know that's kind of how i felt uh it, it, just like clarity for everybody else it's been a while since we recorded uh we've I literally mean, like traveled to five different cities <laughs> like at least since we last did this yeah so um this is the story of Alexander Pichushkin, the chessboard killer. Oh, you okay. Yes. That? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. So basically I remember the, the, the chessboard, he was trying to fill it out with yes. tchotchkes from his kills because he was trying to beat out someone he was inspired by who also killed. Correct. Exactly. Okay. And so he wanted, his goal was to beat this serial killer that he had spotted on the news and he wanted to outdo him. Uh, -huh. uh and so the basically just the last thing I mentioned was how there was this um, woman named Maria who had been attacked and she was uh, she had been thrown down a well and was in the sewer. Yes. And couldn't yes, get out. And I mean, traumatizing. She so she couldn't get out. And then she uh, climbed up, but she, it, the thing was too heavy for her to lift. And so she screamed and she saw a girl run away. And then the girl actually ran away to go get some help with a security yes. guard. And then that's how they found her. And then she was able to tell people who the killer was because he gave his actual name and address. And then do you remember what happened after that? 
they found the, the chessboard. No, I don't know. Um. What? So what happened was that uh, she gave the. Oh the, yes, they like they like told her they they covered it up or something. They told her because she was like she wasn't a yes a citizen or something yes they, and the officer did not want to participate in this uh arrest and said and eh, he was basically being lazy and said uh threatened her with you know her illegal status in moscow and uh said uh-huh. we'll only you know let you go uh and we'll promise to tell your boyfriend you're safe uh and we'll tell him where you are and to bring some clean clothes for you but only if you pretend you fell into the well yeah well first of all kel Surprise, and second of all he did end up going to jail for negligence later right he did he did okay. and um happy the, endings ish yeah it's at least somewhat of a somewhat of a, a bright spot um and then supernenko the future senior investigator later commented his only motive was i do not want to work that's all he did not need to search for anyone or prove anything if Ugh. only he had worked properly, then Petrushkin would have been detained. We would then not have seen more than half the corpses. <gasps> so basically, half of the murders hadn't even been committed yet. And, and they're now on him. Yeah, and if only he had followed through with her saying, this is his name and this is where he lives. Like a, like a smoking gun. It wasn't even like he... It's not even like he was lazy and didn't want to have to go play detective. Like he could have, from he, his exactly. desk, solved it. He could, like he had the answer. He could have just written it down and been like... He could like, have just told a different cop, I'm on my lunch break. There. Yeah. Uh, can you go deal with this? It's really horrific. And I think it also speaks to like just not taking women seriously and things like this where it's mm-hmm. like, okay... Yep. You're fine. We'll call your boyfriend. Like, it just reeks of uh, icky, icky stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, after uh, Maria, Petrushkin attacked someone that he didn't usually attack. And now, I don't know if you remember, but he was known to attack often older gentlemen, o- older people who worked in the park. Or, no, who didn't work in the park. Who played chess in the park. Um because he felt like he could get away with it because people wouldn't go looking for them. Oy. So he didn't care. He usually didn't care who he was killing. It was not about that. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. And so Maria was kind of an anomaly because it was like, oh, somebody would notice she was missing. Her son did notice she was missing. Oh, and yeah. She, she even, left him a literal fucking note, right? Yeah, she'd even written a note. And so the next anomaly basically was this 13-year-old boy named Mikhail. Mikhail I don't know how to say it in uh, in uh, in German. It's Mikhail. Mikhail, I'm going to say, like Michael, basically. Okay. Uh, last name Lobov. And he's 13 years old. So, mm. big yikes. Um, Wait, that was who he killed next? Yes. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. So, that was like kind of another anomaly in that it's not just kind of the old loners at the park. It's like he's now going after people who are more risky. Anyone, anyone is a fair game at this point. Yes, exactly. So between uh, Maria and Mikhail, uh, Petrushkin would murder 48-year-old Vera Sakharova, uh, 46-year-old Boris Nesterov, and 41-year-old Alexei Fedorov. Um, and that all occurred within, let's see, February 27th, March 7th, and March 8th. So, Whoa. Like within a week or two, like really back to back. Um, wow. And now tell me if I've said this before, because I'm not sure I had a, a point where I broke the episode in half, but part of me thinks maybe I've already done this and I moved the the episode break to later. So huh. okay. let me see. Let, like, let me know if this is familiar. If not, we're just going to have to reread it. So um, it was thought that Petrushkin met young Mikhail around the metro station where a lot of kids his age used to hang out near the flower stands and dumpling kiosks no you did not talk about this we didn't right because i was like i would have remembered dumpling kiosks Uh, we would have made a joke about wonton about (laughs) 
<laughs> wanton wanton yeah, yeah it's funny we we did a live show and unfortunately there was like a, a minor medical emergency during the show it was in brooklyn and um so you know we put up the lights like we want to make sure uh this person was taken care of by the way shout out to gabby i uh i don't know if i ever told you this m but i met two of the nurses they approached me at a bar after the show and were oh, like really? hey we were the nurses that came and helped and then they were like we met tonight helping gabby Aww. And then that now they're friends and they went out for drinks and it was very fun. But anyway, um, they said, well, Gabby, like, oh, I hope I hope you know that y- you caused friendships at, yes. at the very least. Yes. And honestly, it was I, I don't I, like, they mentioned briefly like, oh, she might have been a little embarrassed, whatever. I don't want you to ever feel embarrassed if, you know, especially with a medical emergency kind of no. thing. Um, and we just got to do a Q&A and talk about ourselves more. So honestly, it was a win win for us. Um, yeah. But I'm glad you're safe and healthy and uh, and so someone during the Q and A asked what my dinner plans were yeah. and told me about a wonton place and it's very they basically lovely. said it's a wonton place but but if you log into their website or go onto their website they spell it wanton and so it's <laughs> it's just like a perfect little setup um, but anyway so yeah dumpling kiosks so I'm sure we have not covered this yet. Similar to his other victims, Petrushkin went on a 20 minute walk through the forest with Mik- Mikhail, but this is also more fucked up in my opinion because he's 13. So Uh he's like a grown man walking this 13 year old kid. Mm -hmm. He had cigarettes and drinks when out of nowhere, Petrushkin struck him on his head and like Maria shoved him down the well to die. (gasps) Uh, Fortunately, like with Maria porch. Oh, Petrushkin didn't realize that he hadn't actually killed young Mikhail. So, Apologies. Two for two. Wow. I did, yeah, I did say, oh, he was his next victim. He was his victim. Right. But he did survive, thankfully. Damn, at that point, I would have be like, if I were Maria, I would just like leave the the heavy thing that you like, the, yeah. the super great. I would just leave that open at this point and be just, like, hopefully if people can get through there, they just can just open all away. of them in town in case anybody goes yeah, to one well, of the. Now, now I'm worried that the same thing's going to happen where he can't lift the heavy thing. And, and he's he a 13 year old. Yeah. Terrifying. Um, so he, he didn't realize, uh, again, fortunately, that he hadn't actually killed young Mikhail. So as fortune would have it, Mikhail's jacket caught on a piece of metal in the well. And so he Whoa. was like caught and he was able to crawl out. Get but, out. Wow. And Petrushkin had already left. So unfortunately, like with Maria, uh, the police weren't really interested to hear his story. Uh, wow. Two for two. Yeah. Whoa. Now a kid comes and says, hey, this guy, we know who he is, did this to me. And oh again, my God. dismissed. Was it, was it the same cop? Oh, I'm not sure. Because if it were, I would be like beyond even more infuriated that like it, if you could have excused it in your mind as like that was one person with a crazy story, you have full confirmation now and you're still But doing honestly, nothing. I think I'd be more relieved because it's like at least there aren't two people who are hearing about this true. horrific predator and are like, oh, it's fine. That's you know, true. I can't Ugh. decide which is worse. It's like either this one person. Yeah. But yeah, either way, it's really bad. Um, he reported all the details, but he was dismissed and he was sent home. So this is also talk about... PTSD trauma. Uh, Mikhail would even see Petrushkin out and about the following week. Like he was walking around and he's like, that's the guy who tried to murder me. Hmm. So he screamed. He called for an officer's attention to alert them to the fact that his murderer was having a casual stroll a few feet ahead of him. Mm -hmm. But basically they were like, you like go home. You're a child. They totally fucking dismissed him. And unlike Maria, wow. it's it's blood boiling, honestly. That's a great that's a great way to phrase it. It's like so infuriating. Unlike Maria and Mikhail, the majority of Petrushkin's victims were men he already knew, and a lot of them, like I said, were either experiencing homelessness or had very few friends or family who would miss them if they were to disappear. Um, so, for example, Petrushkin would murder one of his friends named Yev, who often played chess with him, um, and nothing ever came about. Uh, Petrushkin's tactics would change ever so slightly uh, after his dog died, and while huh. he, cl- which is like interesting because I feel like there's an element of 
empathy that you don't often see like he again we i know i mentioned this but it was a while ago that like he actually was really fond of animals and cared for them a lot so it's it's an interesting kind of juxtaposition um but i guess once his dog died his tactics changed and while he claims he was kind of he was upset about the death of his dog he actually uh profited from this piece of news um so his dog died and like yes he said he was uh distraught about it but he also used it to his advantage because remember when he would tell his victims oh um like i'm feeling really sad can you come uh uh, you know me so now he's doing the classic i'm i lost my dog he's doing come with me thing this thing yes so uh very disturbing um he says he felt a deep sense of loss uh and it sort of mimics the time that he lost his grandfather and this stirred up buried emotions and so he used this tactic on yev he made his way to the park found yev to tell him about his dog passing and he asked him to come pay tribute with a with the dog um which yev of course accepted and they did the same rigmarole all over again after they'd walked to the empty part of the park petrushkin struck yev on the head dragged his body to the sewer and dumped him inside Mm. and he actually alleged to killing another 20 people of a similar demographic in pretty much the same manner uh in a matter 20 more 20 more in a matter of months oh which is a lot oh my god they were only able to confirm six however um but still uh not good either way uh so the the six that they were able to confirm were between the ages of 40 to 46 all seem to be in that same kind of demographic as yev And in his 2006 confession, according to The Independent, he admitted that he'd killed Valerie Dolmatov, his neighbor, because of a a fight they had over their dogs 10 years earlier. What? A tabloid. Talk about a grudge. Talk about a fucking grudge. Which uh, astrological sign holds grudges, you think? I'm Mm. just wondering. Hi don't know because i don't it feels i mean i'm always just gonna lean into scorpio I, taurus taurus loves a loves oh, a taurus grudge kind of stubborn okay interesting i i'm I don't, just taking a guess in the dark i'll i don't know i feel like that's a good one i feel like taurus and i feel like scorpio could could do kind of like a long like a long game of like, i think like any hard-headed f- fiery personalities like i think an aries would certainly hold a grudge mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i mean i'm just guessing here Okay, I don't interesting. Know. Let me check his birthday. I'm curious. If he's a Taurus, it'd be very funny. That would be. Um, a if Virgo? He's a, if he's a Gemini, I'm going to scream. A Virgo could be interesting, too. This is um, a fun game. It is, right? <laughs> I feel like it yeah. is a fun game. Um, he is a... He is an Aries. Oh, all right. That fi- okay. Fire sign. That makes sense. You did say also, that, right? I did say Aries, yeah. I mean, they like vengeance. They sure do. Yeah. But also, like, uh, are you kidding me? Like, okay, first of all, you're killing anyone. Relax. Uh, but yeah. also, like, uh, for a 10-year, a fight 10 years ago about your dog. Like, yeah. I feel like this guy was just looking for any reason. Anything. Like, get over any it. Any reason. Yeah. Uh, But no. Like, someone had to die because of a fight. Think of a fight that you had 10 years ago, and someone's going to come kill you today because of it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, like, wait, what? I don't even remember. Yeah, like, oh my God, that's awful. So yes, he admitted that he had killed Valerie, his neighbor, because of a uh, because of a fight about their dogs ten years earlier. And a tabloid uh, reported Mr. Petrushkin's beloved mongrel apparently sniffed Valerie's dog, and Mr. <laughs> so nature happened. And <laughs> animals <laughs> interacted with each other. Yeah. So basically. Mr. Petrushkin's beloved dog apparently sniffed another man's dog and the other man shouted at Mr. Petrushkin, so shouted at him to take away his enormous mongrel mutt. Really? And so 10 years later decided uh, vengeance must be had and uh, For God's sake. murdered okay. the neighbor. So 
Let's check into 2003. Uh, Pachushkin Please. was still living in his mother's home, but now his half-sister Katya had gotten married and her husband had also moved into the apartment. And they lived in the bedroom while Pachushkin and his mom slept in the living room. Very cramped setup. But even with them basically living on top of each other, no one at all suspected what he was up to. Hmm? Nobody had any clue. So, uh, how? 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 Like, and also, like, how good of an actor is he where he's coming home and just easy fucking breezy? Like, he just shoved a bunch of people in a sewer grate. I mean, well, I know I always try to, like, put myself in their shoes, but, like, in the, in the killer's shoes, but, like, my, I don't have a, a killer's mind, so I guess that's not a fair thing to do. But if I, if I killed somebody, like, a nervous wreck is beyond an understatement. Like, there's oh, no, totally. there's no, f- faking that something happened if i ever kill someone you will know like and i even if i think i'm hiding it you'll know absolutely for him to just be piled in there with roommates and everyone's just like oh let's just watch a tv show let's just hang out what what i know and i i think i don't know if it's like oh because now he's done like 40 of them and he's just used to it or if he's always been this calm cool and collected i don't know um but yes, so they had no idea. They had no idea what he was up to. And GQ actually gives a detailed account into the murder of Alexander Petrushkin's 32nd victim, who unfortunately is not named. Um, and it was an early evening in spring 2003. Uh, and this victim was a middle-aged man. And as investigator Fyodosova describes, as always, Petrushkin waited for hours until his victims were all alone. In the case of 32, that's what they called the victim. Oh, uh, yeah, not not sit not sitting well I mean, with I don't know me, what the right thing I is, know. but still. I guess in the case of this victim, he had always been, he had been smoking and drinking on a bench, legs crossed next to a bus stop around the corner from Petrushkin's apartment. It was warm outside and there were too many people around. Petrushkin would have to wait around an hour before everyone but this man disappeared. So it wouldn't take long before Petrushkin and this man were walking to a remote spot in Bitsa Park. And Petrushkin remembered that he was in a foul mood. And so in fear that he'd just leave, Petrushkin tried to cheer him up. Mm. And how did you, how did he do that? You ask? Well, he asked him what he would wish for if he were granted one wish. And, uh, this man replied to stop drinking. Oh, so Petrushkin then smugly replied, I promise you, today will be the day you stop drinking. <gasps> Ew! Yeah. Oh, God, I hate that. And so apparently uh, the man asked no questions about where they were walking to. Uh, instead, the man who was drunk at the time just kind of followed along. There wasn't even a spiel about the dead dog. And Petrushkin never revealed what he and this man were otherwise talking about before he struck him with such force that he was so severely injured but barely alive uh, and then was pushed down a well. Oh, my God. So this was clearly one of his favorite tactics um, to hurt them in a way where they were still conscious by Mm -hmm. bashing them in the head but not... Like wanting them to suffer. Yes, exactly. Uh, it's it's sick. Um, and so as Petrushkin considered murdering more and, or sorry, continued murdering more and pe- more people, he also began forcing, okay. What? This is something I mentioned in the last episode and I kind of gave the, gave the impression that this was a, it's a post-mortem thing only, but it seems like maybe it wasn't a post-mortem thing only. What? So as Petrushkin continued murdering more and more people, he also began forcing broken shards of a broken vodka bottle into the victim's skull before pushing <gasps> them down the well. Oh my God. And if you, uh, <laughs> if the victim was not dead before he plunged the 30 feet to the bottom, the impact would then finish the job. Um, And that became his signature move. And this feels particularly fucked up when you think about the man who said he wished he would stop drinking. And then this was done to his body and he was thrown down. Oh, well, I, Uh, and I feel like the, wow. And I feel like the shards 
now going into people's heads. I feel like that's in a sad way, almost expected now, because I feel like after 40 people of just hitting them in the head, like you need something new, like you need like a yeah, hot like escalating. It's yeah. Like it had to. So I feel like just hitting someone in the head wasn't good enough because it maybe it, you got too used to that level of them suffering and you yes, make it worse. That's a good point. And we've also had that, um, other kind of hint that he wanted the glory the attention Uh to beat this other guy so i bet he liked having a signature move that across the board would like indicate it was him you know which is Mm. just sick wow Um, yeah it was around this time that more and more people were becoming aware of the murders that were taking place. Um, Bodies would appear at a nearby wastewater treatment center, but it would take time for authorities to connect the uh, Bitsevsky Park disappearances to the bodies that had made their way down the sewage canals. So they had basically floated (gasps) to a different place through the sewage canals. So it (gasps) it took them a while to figure out the connection of they came from the park where these other people had been initially killed, where he just left the bodies. Wow. Very dark. Oh my God. Very dark. Also, science is kind of amazing because I wouldn't even know where to begin to discover that. Me neither. Me neither. To to be able to follow the sewer tunnels and water flow. Hell no. Um, According to GQ, it is believed that at least 13 corpses, including possibly that of victim 32, are believed to be stuck somewhere in the sewage system. Which Still? Yeah. (gasps) <gasps> oh my god wow this is a really fucking dark story yes i mean i it has been dark but it just keeps it just keeps worse. adding more and more um but that being said many bodies never turned up at all so we're not sure what happened and it wasn't like people weren't aware of the murders that were going on it became kind of like a known thing that this park this bits of park was like a fucking murder field basically mm. Um, he had been operating four times in this four times, four years, way more than four times, but four years in this area. And he basically began leaving the corpses exactly where he had murdered them at this mm. point. So bits of park was becoming, uh, more known as the bad part of town. Uh, all thanks to what people began calling the bits of park maniac or the bits of beast. Whoa. And only during his trial would his body count be confirmed for this period of his life. Um, and there is a long list here. I'm not going to read every single name. Um, you can find them online. Uh, yeah. A lot of them I also know I won't be able to pronounce and I don't want to give. Um, I don't want to disrespectfully attempt to sure. say people's names and incorrectly. Do you know the and, number, though? Yeah. So in 2003, he murdered 10 people, Whoa. Uh, which is like almost one a month. Yeah. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then in 2005, he murdered 11. <gasps> um, and so those, uh, those. I don't know were, why I'm still shocked at everything it, you're saying. It, it is. It's almost like you can't comprehend it. But then when you put it into kind of a number or like something we can grasp onto, it makes it so real just, and visceral. I keep thinking it's done. And then you just keep going. It keeps happening. Yeah. Well, well, good news. So that that last one, the eleven, were in um, two thousand five. Okay. And so uh, it was in February of two thousand six that uh, Andre Supernenko was hired as senior investigator on the case because it suddenly became glaringly obvious that they were dealing with a serial killer, like un- mm-hmm. understatement of the century. Um, and clues t- as to who the murderer was were few and far between because. Um, whoever was doing this was good at leaving no trace behind. And at one point it was believed that, or leaving every trace behind, but the p- cops are like, nah, right. we're I not was going to say, I'm sorry. I feel like there is evidence here. Yep. Like plenty, like his also, name and address. <laughs> also, um, I don't mean to have you scroll up in notes or anything, but do you know how old he is at this, at this point? Um, no, that's a great question. So 2006 and he was born in 74. Okay, so that's what, 20, that's 16 plus 6 is 22? No, 32? 32? You're so smart. Okay. But isn't that wild? He's 32 and he's murdered, I mean, dozens upon dozens of upon dozens of people and has not gotten caught. Oy. I'm just disturbed by that. Um, 
So uh, the clues were hard to find. Um, at one point, it was believed that because Bitsa Park was near a psychiatric sanatorium, uh, perhaps a sane patient who was allowed to go on walks in Bitsa Park or a former patient was responsible. So I love that we're immediately taking the mentally ill and saying, oh, well, that must be the killer is someone, you know, that old trope of uh, someone's loose from the mental yeah. hospital and is doing this, which just yikes, big yikes. Um, after inspecting some of the corpses discovered at the wastewater treatment center, the ones that had gone through the sewer, the one conclusive piece of evidence that emerged was that this psychopath was using a hammer to <gasps> to uh, knock them unconscious or not even unconscious, but to to kind of surprise attack them uh, before Wee. killing them. Oh, God. So, uh, I don't as, this, anything would have been bad. But now that I know that it's a hammer, there's I something don't... about a hammer that's like it's small, but so heavy. I think because we've all accidentally like bumped our finger with a hammer. Can you imagine that hitting you in the back of the fucking head? Oh my God. Ooh. Yeah, it's not, it's not good. Um, so after inspecting blah, blah, blah. So as part of the search, one day authorities had around 200 police officers in the park to confront anyone they thought was acting suspicious. Um, and that day they happened to a, to arrest a trans woman who was right carrying a hammer uh which they claimed to be carrying for protection mm -hmm. and news of the bits of park maniac being captured was leaked to the media because of this but alas within 24 hours thank god the woman was able to provide an alibi and was deemed innocent okay good but can you imagine being like oh no this hammer i'd just keep it in my purse which again sounds like something i would do like this fork and this hammer yeah i 100 percent like it's a it's a bold choice of weaponry but i totally get a being a trans woman at that time or even today and having a weapon on you just in case absolutely I, yeah not a good look when they're looking for a hammer and she's got one of all <laughs> things yeah, yeah of all things it's like oh this is awkward i feel like if the police ever were looking for someone that had anything at all on them that was a little crazy i feel like they would just have to run into you and find i'm in trouble bag. you I'm would be very much in trouble a real mess. It's like when uh, on Let's Make a Deal, when Wayne Brady like just says a random item and it's yep. like, if you have it in your purse, you win. And I feel like you would win every time. I just wish I could play that game. That's another thing I thought maybe I should do on TikTok. Like, a, let's see what we pull out today. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it would I'm just always be some... your social security card and then you would show that to the public on TikTok. <laughs> and then my identity is now stolen. Yeah. Um. Wow. So Pajishkin even remembered, according to the podcast Serial Killers, that one night he was at home watching TV with his family when a news report flashed about the recent arrest of the Bitsa maniac. Mm. And he felt kind of mixed about it because, like, he knew, obviously, it was himself. And so when they arrested this woman, uh, they... So he, he, he enjoyed the conversation with his family where they were like, wow... I can't believe they caught what, like what a sicko. I can't believe they caught that person. Um, so he felt kind of like excited about that, but he also felt hurt that his work was attributed to someone else. Oh, like get he wasn't out of here. getting the credit, you know, forget about it. Okay. So of course he would go on to murder 55 year old Yuri Romashkin, 68 year old Stepan Vasilenko, 24 year old Mahmoud Yoldashev and 48 year old supermarket worker, Larissa Kaligina before Alexander Petrushkin was officially caught and arrested on June 16, 2006, after Holy the crap. murder of Marina Moskalyova. So, Ugh. initially, Petrushkin denied everything, but within a few hours, he would confess. Oh. What did you do? I stepped on the mixer. Oh my God. I was like, yo, not tasteful. <laughs> okay. The only thing I will say, at least it went to when he said he, uh, he <laughs> denied everything. Right. Yeah. No. Can you imagine if that was like an applause or something? Oh my God. Well, then that I would say, oh, that went to him being arrested, but <laughs> none of it. Sorry. Th that was good. not, that should have not been funny, but it was, you, you got me. You I got mean, me. it really was an accident. Um, it, it, because it was an accident, it is funny. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely not intentional. I want to be very, very clear on that. Oh <laughs> that really threw me off. I was like, did I do that? I like, freaked out. Uh, nope, it's usually me. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, so he claimed he had nothing to do with it. 
Womp, womp, womp. Nice uh-huh. try, buddy. Mm-hmm. Let's put it. I'm going to put that spin on it. Sure. Um, so, but a few hours later, he confessed to police that he had met with Marina for a picnic while they sat for hours alone while he was contemplating whether to kill her or not. Ugh, uh, what a tough decision. He, wow. Must be rough. He eventually decided to take her life as life would have become torture for him otherwise. Wow. That's what he said. I'm, I believe it. If he didn't kill her, uh, his life would become his own personal hell and he would just uh-huh. torture himself forever. Well, obviously. Uh, in his confession, he told authorities all about how the majority of his victims were men, although there were around three who were women. Um, according to The Exile by Masha Levine, Petrushkin told police that he knew 20 of his victims from playing chess with them in the park. In fact, 10 of the maniac's victims lived in the same four building complex where he lived. Oh my Ten of God. them. Can you imagine the people living in that apartment complex being like, everyone here is dropping like flies. I'm so disappearing. scared. Disappearing. Or like and even like people going to play chess there, 20 people who play chess there all died. I'd be like, we're not allowed. To, no one's going to the chess park anymore. Hell no. Um, and so with nearly all of them, he would coerce them to go to bits of park uh, to tell them about his dead dog. He'd invite them to share a vodka to mourn his dog's death. Uh, and then he would lodge that vodka bottle into their skull and push them down a well. So. Wow. Uh, in Masha Levine's analysis into the psychology behind his attacks, she notes that Petrushkin didn't rape his victims, but he got sexual kicks from sexual substitution. Really? So unlike Chikatilo, who was his like idol, uh, he wasn't about the slashing and cutting. He was more into... What? Hmm. What? This is a quote, so I'm going to say it. Uh, skeletal penetration... <gasps> Also known as skull fucking. Uh huh. Um, so after he got his victims wasted, he'd bash their head in with a hammer, then stick empty bottles and twigs into the holes he'd made in his in their skulls. Wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. He he later said, "I like the sound of a skull splitting." <gasps> oh my god! Wow yeah um whoa he sometimes mixed it up a bit he strangled a few of his victims or even tried out a homemade single shooter uh that he made out of a pipe um a single shooter what is that I, like a i think like a gun like some sort of something that okay whatever. shot something <laughs> sure yeah sorry you had me at at skull fucking that was that's all i i'm out i'm out i'm far out Far, far away. Uh, so Peter Savodnik breaks down Petrushkin's motive in the GQ article. He comments, unlike Andre Chikatilo, a sexually dysfunctional sexual predator, or Ted Bundy, who preferred college girls, Petrushkin didn't want sex. He sought something purer, an untainted death. Ew. This is not to say that killing was not sexual for him. The way the maniac talked about killing, he would tell the court that one's first murder is like first love made it sound like a biological imperative. He said he sometimes ejaculated when he killed. Okay. Okay. Uh, he even later went on to equate murdering to a perpetual orgasm. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Natasha Fyatasova, Fai- daughter to Boris Fyatasova, uh, Petrushkin's 36th victim, remembers that it was strange that he only wanted to kill people he knew. If he had killed people he didn't know in another neighborhood, it wouldn't have been as bad, but he killed people he knew. Uh, Fyatasova was especially heartbroken because she knew Petrushkin well. She was very good friends with his half sister, Katya. Uh, there was a total shock when we heard it was Sasha Pashushkin. He was always very calm, always by himself. Wow. And um, he confessed to murdering a total of 61 people. Uh, Holy shit. It's a lot. And all, I don't even know 61 people. Me neither. And all in that park. Wow. Yeah. Uh, police would only, only be able to link him to 49 murders. Um but again, Why? there were a lot of people that was, those were the only ones they were able to like track down and like <sighs> connect to him. Oh, but I see. like the way that he operated and the way that he kind of picked on people who didn't have like family friends, like I 
would not be surprised if the number was higher than that 49 they found. Mm. Um, He spoke about his kills with a strange pride, reflecting that he felt like, this is disgusting, felt like the father of all these people. Uh. (sighs) Since it was I who opened the door for them to another world. So, like, the mother is the giver of life and the father is the giver of death? Is that what he's thinking? Like, he's, like, he's giving them a existential new spiritual life experience yeah i don't know like he's opening the world for them by by the way like i don't think we need to say it at all but like the confidence and the arrogance of a man at all let alone when he's got this weird power that is backed behind him like he killed 61 people it i want to it's like it's not like if you're a a dude who is super arrogant and like you killed one person and you think you're going to get away with it. And then you get caught right away. Right. Like this guy has successfully been getting away with it. So his arrogance must be like overflowing. Absolutely. The cockiness. And then like for him to be like, first of all, this one guy was a killer and he is not, I'm, I'm a higher value than that. So I'm going to kill worse and better and more. And then on top of that, I am the father of these people. And also I consider them my children. It's like They're my children. Fuck. Also, I'm going to fuck. do stuff to them after they're dead. It's, and I'm going to throw them up into fucking wells and stab them in the head. What? It's horrific. And it's it's so nonsensical. And it makes me really want to hear a lecture on on forensic psychology i'm just so curious what did you say earlier blood boiling uh it makes my blood blood boiling that's just like i'm trying to think of the word that this is the experience i'm having and i think yeah i think that's what probably what i said um so at the time of his confession he also felt a strange pride in as you just kind of alluded to being able to supersede chikatilo's final body count Mm -hmm. um he did feel sad, uh, but just because this was kind of an inconvenience, uh, he said, if they had not caught me, I would never have stopped. It doesn't sound like it. Yeah, nobody's surprised by that. I feel like if your whole goal was to, like, fill out a chessboard, like, at that point, this is your new normal. You don't just stop once you hit the end no, of the chessboard. absolutely. You start on, like, checkers. Yeah, like, you keep going. As mentioned previously, Petrushkin was highly cooperative with police, um, his trial began September 13, 2007, and on the documentary, uh, journalist Yana Sharinskaya, who attended the trial, described his behavior as a performance because he wanted the attention. Like, he just loved that the attention was all about him. Wow. Um, my eyes just rolled all the way back into it my It hurts, head. right? How much your eyes roll? Uh, in the trial, he was kept inside a glass cage. Whoa. Uh, similar to how Andre Chikatilo was also... 14 years earlier kept inside a glass cage uh, during his trial but despite but despite the fun of this glass cage there were also two things that irked him he pleaded with the court to bring his total body count up to 60 with three surviving victims because they were only trying him for 49 and uh chikatilo's number was 54 and so he was very annoyed that even though he said he killed more than that that they were cutting it at 49 Wow. And uh, now he would be, quote, denied this eternal fame, Uh as he put it. Um, Secondly, according to GQ, during the trial, he remembered how when he was committing the murders, he sometimes had to hurry up and finish someone off so he could rush home and shower. In some cases, scrubbing the blood out of his hair or from under his fingernails and watch the latest installment of TV adaptation of Alexandre Dumas, Countess of Montsoreau. Uh, with his mother that was the show that they watched together i think i mentioned that briefly last episode but he could never miss an episode and so he would say oh it was so frustrating sometimes i'd have to like like rush a murder so i could get home to watch this with mom uh-huh uh-huh, uh-huh yeah. yeah so alexander petrushkin was convicted on october 25th 2007 for 48 murders and three attempted murders he was sentenced to life in prison with the first 15 in total solitary confinement Whoa. Which I guess finishes this year. Whoa. So, yikes. I don't think he's going to be a more stable person after that. I I would argue impossible. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, In prison, Alexander Petrushkin uh, has written to over 80 women who admired his work. What the fuck is going on? What is wrong with these people? 
Like, I like to think that all women are on the same page, but like, what the fuck but, is going on with but these? They're certainly women? not. Oh my god! Otherwise, we'd be in a much better place. Well, uh, yes, those 80, 80 people, in my opinion, certainly would. Yep. Uh, there was one woman who stood out, and in two thousand sixteen, journalists discovered he had proposed to a woman called Natalia, who had first written to him in two thousand fourteen. Natalia was an employee at a Siberian children's shop. Mm -hmm. hopefully has been fired since then (laughs) right yeah and first saw petrushkin on a news program and fell in love wow she has commented saying that she is proud of her groom as if he was a hollywood star her groom hollywood star are you kidding me disgusting unwell Uh, so so unwell like i say i'm unwell like that's fucking Unwell. unwell Despite the uh, engagement, the Russian prison system forbade them from continuing contact and getting married. Uh, They were like, we're drawing the line here. Um, However, still to this day, Natalia is able to see her loved one every day in the form of a tattoo on her arm. Get out. (laughs) Of his face. (laughs) Gross. And that is the case of Alexander Petrushkin, the chessboard killer. Um, The chessboard thing wasn't really much except that he tried to fill out a chess board with right his victims and uh also killed people playing chess in the park so i guess it sort of fits um but it wasn't as kind of like about chess yeah exactly um it's rough because there is not a lot of information on a lot of his victims so i just want to point that out especially because he picked a lot of people who were considered loners and that kind of thing um but yeah uh it's it's a pretty disturbing one and um whoa i'm gonna send you a picture of the chessboard here yeah and the chatter and uh i'll text that. it to you okay oh there it is One fifty-seven fifty. oh i see he was i see oh what a weird way to even do the chart but okay we uh, wow that's super eerie do we know where this chessboard is now you know, I don't. I assume like, it's in, where did they put this kind of shit? Like, I assume it's in custody somewhere, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess it would just be like held somewhere. Yeah. Oh, that's so eerie. You know what? This is such a, a kind of half off question, but like the one of the main things that make me think that like ghosts might not be real is like, how do you kill 61 people and you're not being haunted by every single one of them and like getting your ass kicked sometimes. every night? I just feel yeah. like if if you're a killer, you should have the 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 most demonic things happening to you. Like I I mean, that's it's such a weird small like my brain's having a moment and, and thinking about that kind of stuff. But I just think like 61 people, like how do you not have bad energy following you at all? Whether it's a, well, a you ghost must. or not. You must. Right? Right? I'm sure he does. Like, I, He's in solitary confinement. He's probably fucking tortured. Yeah. I just wonder how you just, you like, okay, 61 people. How did you get to, I don't know, 43 and like just walk around with an air of confidence and like not even realize that like the world fucking hates you, you know? It's twisted. It's just wild. Very twisted. And it makes me sad and it makes me wonder if just that really terrible head injury would have done anything if it had been prevented. Right. Didn't he get hit in the head with a swing or something? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, yeah. I also feel terrible for people who have had head injuries and have to deal with that stupid trope. Like it's I terrible. Feel like, yeah. Like it's, it's like terrible. no, I had a head injury. I'm not a killer. You know. Awful. <sighs> anyway, a lot of a lot of tangents we could get off on, but I know that you also are running off to something right now. <sighs> so yeah, I just got to go help Zibebe uh, go to sleep. But yes, there is also a photo of the tattoo on her arm, and it's. Does oh, it look you, like him? Are you sending it to me? Yeah, let me send it to you. And then you can go talk to your baby. And what a I weird life. I what a weird you, life you live. Just having you. to deal with dark shit and then just go be with a little sweet baby. It's really lucky that I'm extremely good at compartmentalization. Because yeah. I'm very good at that. Oh, ew. The tattoo is literally like a shadow figure of it's him grotesque. and a chessboard. I so like, it's realize. not. I didn't even realize. Yeah, that's a fucking chessboard. So like now the person, so now it's like, you're not even ignoring that part of his life to try you're to love the saying, other things. Oh, he's moved past it. You're saying we're both celebrating it. 
You're saying, I want to mark my body for the things that he wants to be known for and I want to know him for. Ugh. That makes me so ill. That's fucking disgusting. And this is the this is the actual person, his wife or this girlfriend wife, or whatever? Yeah. Or I guess they're not allowed to get married, so it's his fiance. I feel like, I mean, I'm sure this is like a probably a controversial topic, but I wonder what the, like, how do you, I guess technically she hasn't done anything wrong, but I feel like if you are falling in love with someone who has murdered (laughs) 61 people, like, shouldn't you yourself maybe like be on a suspect list or like a, not that you've done anything, but like maybe like a, let's watch out because their, their values are a little wild list. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Put them on a list. I mean, I'm sure I'm on a fucking list for saying some of the shit I say in text messages. So May I don't I hope that's not a controversial thing to say, but like I just think like who is this person that fell in love with you and like is cool with this? Like just totally fucking cool with you murdering sixty one people and is like, that's not a red flag. That's not worth thinking about. Yeah, at least put a little red flag in her and like just just make sure if something happens, like, like check out where she is at right now. Like what does girl talk over coffee look like with this person? Do they right. tell their friends like, yeah, it was 61 people, but like, whatever, whatever. Or, or is it like, yeah, that's not good. We're like for sure trying to like compartmentalize that and not think about it while I'm dating him. Like, like, like I want to yeah, like, know the also, mentality. It's, it's on my arm. So I never stop thinking about it. Like, I right. Like you wanted to arm. get a tattooed. You wanted to get the thing that was marking all the murder victims on your arm. Like so his like trophy. So like what's happened? Like, are you, are you good? Like, do you, you're not, I, well, I, you need, Sir, I think a therapist needs to be involved. I think the therapist involved. would have a lot to say about this entire relationship. Um, if a therapist has a lot to say about my relationship, then I think like this one probably has a lot more layers. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm like not to trying unpack. to like do any sort of like direct slander or anything, but I'm concerned that people have have these like like i feel like i think you know what i mean I'm yeah, tra- i mean i absolutely do know what i mean know what you mean but i also think that this person saw him on a news headline a news program obviously discussing the fact that he murdered men women and children 61 of them and immediately fell in love with this person like that I, there's not i don't think there's any way around saying you know what, though? How fucked up that is. Like, I actually, like, have a bit of a request for you eventually. I think this before we, like, give our own opinions, which, like, I mean, we're already giving our own opinions. But I think it would be a really interesting topic for you to do is the psychology of people who fall in love with serial killers. Because you've requested that before. Have I? Because I'm yeah. thinking about this and I'm like, I feel like I'm making this one person um like I'm like isolating the experience, but I think about like all the women who were just so in love with Ted Bundy or like, well, I mean, I there's mean, clearly about, something. Well, I mean, I think know. about this guy, like he had a ton of people. He just picked her as the one that stood right. out. So, yeah. So, um, I mean, I mean, she, this woman is not alone in thinking like this. It's just a completely different way of thinking than I do. And I would love to see if there have been studies on, the reasoning behind this kind of stuff or how they're able to reconcile it yep. in their head. Yep. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, I anyway. just wrote that down. So thank you. Cause I'll look I, into it. I hope it's not too controversial of a topic, but it's like just all I'm trying to get at is I'm fascinated and confused and would love to understand. That's all. Absolutely. And would love to get some more insight. Um, no, I totally agree. So we will look into that eventually. Sorry for the very long episode, everybody. But and I know you got to go see your baby and completely melt away from the last two hours. I hope Uh, I can. I'll try. All right. Well, I am excited to eventually hear you talk about that. It doesn't have to be next week, but I am thinking about it and I am hoping. Okay, it'll be I will do it soon because I think it's a very fascinating topic. Okay. And okay, I love you. Uh, That's why (laughs) we. (laughs) Drink. I love you too. Thank God. I was worried you wouldn't say it.